Are you getting back into fitness after taking some time off? Do not make this mistake. Everybody thinks when they take time off and they come back, they need to go on a cut. They need to cut their calories. They need to try to lose weight. Huge mistake. If you worked out before, took some time off, get back into working out, what you need to do is build muscle. Get your protein intake back up and get stronger. It'll make the cut much easier later on and you'll get those gains back. You'll get those muscle memory gains coming back. So don't go into a cut, go into a slight bolt. I like yeah, this yeah. tip. We recently had a live caller um, who uh, listened to the show for a long time, ran several programs, really uh, great job of uh, bulking, uh, mini bulks, mini cuts, Was interrupting, consistent. consistent. And really, we were kind of diving into uh, what he did. He, he had gone on vacation for two or three weeks, so fell off the diet, fell off training. It was a vacation for two weeks or a camp and for then like kids. an injury, and then, or and then he was sick for a week. There you go. So yeah, yeah so like you know, so basically a month of like kind of falling off, right, of the diet mm -hmm. and training. And he came at a muscular guy, right? So bigger, seventeen percent, fifteen to seventeen percent body fat, a lot of muscle, two hundred something pound dude, and then came back and uh, went right into a, a cut. And it was really the one of the only critiques that I personally had was, you know, logically you think you think I fell off from training, probably made a bad a lot of food bad food choices as far as the quality of food I'm eating out and think soup and shit like that. Like these are the things that you're doing when you or sick, or you haven't, and so you you think logically, like, oh, I'm getting back on it, now let me get back, lean out, because I feel soft, or whatever. Uh, you know, it, 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 literally, the, the strategy for me later on, I think as I started to understand the importance of this, was I would get back, and I, instead of actually doing that, I would be at a maintenance or a surplus, and go right back into it, and my, the logic behind that was twofold for me. One, uh, it's already hard to be consistent with eating protein when I'm on my diet and I'm tracking and I'm yes. paying attention. So, so number one, if I'm falling off the diet, I'm not training, I'm missing my protein intake and probably pretty egregiously, especially if I got sick. If I got sick, I'm eating soup and that's it. Definitely. So I'm definitely missing uh, my, my protein intake. Second, I haven't lifted for three weeks or four weeks and I'm getting back in. So it's going to take very little stimulus for my body to get a signal to adapt and build muscle again. In fact, everybody's felt that before. You get back the first time and a lot of times you overreach and you're sore. And so needing the additional calories mm -hmm. to go to recovery and adaptation from this loud signal that I've trained and, uh, and facilitate recovery versus being in a deficit trying to do that. And so I found to be far more successful after I come off of a, you know, time off, whether it was planned or not, uh, that I get back in a calorie surplus. I found the oh, same thing. Yeah, better psychologically, better yeah, physically yeah. as well. I yeah. found the same thing. I'll, I'll give you two scenarios why this applies most of the time. Scenario one, it's been a long time since you worked out. You've taken years off. You're overweight. You want to lose weight. Uh, the best thing to do to start out, and we've talked about this many times, is to work on the metabolism first before you ever try to cut. So that's why it's valuable there. I'm still going to bump your protein, and we're still going to try to build muscle right. before we even try to cut because we want to put ourselves in a position to where the cut is sustainable, where we have a faster, more effective metabolism in the context of fat loss in order to do the cut. Now, the second scenario, it's even more important. You took off a month. You're normally very consistent. You took off a month. If you're consistent with strength training, then you take a month or two months or three months off. You went into a catabolic state. You went into a muscle loss, muscle pare down state. So you're catabolic. But what's behind the scenes there that, that you can activate is something called muscle memory. This is a very real thing. Mo anybody who's ever worked out has experienced this. You, it takes you a long time to gain 10 pounds of lean body mass. You lose it for whatever reason. Getting it back the second time around really fast. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to get that back as fast as possible so you can get everything working again. So you went catabolic, bump the protein, keep the calories maintenance or above, start lifting, get those gains back. So, And this is what I would look forward to after layoffs. After layoffs, for whatever reason, I can't wait to get back to the gym to build that muscle back. I'm not worried about my body fat because when I get the muscle, the fat starts to fall off. Now, if I go from catabolic to deficit, so I go catabolic time off, now I'm going into a cut and then I go lift weights. Very difficult. It's very, yeah. very difficult. My body's not going to want to gain the, the muscle anabolic back. anabolic feeling is so much better. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And I'm not setting myself up 
uh, long term. So in, in, in pretty much almost any scenario, and I don't say every scenario, but in most scenarios, that's a better way to get started. Either because either you're ramping up the metabolism, you're trying to put yourself in a better place for fat loss, or you're rebuilding the muscle that you lost. And Adam, you know, when I, even when I overeat on vacation, okay, I may overeat, but I never hit my protein That's targets. right. Mm -hmm. Hitting, you know, so I, I'll aim for, let's say, 200 grams of protein a day. That's a nice, optimal 200 to 220 for building muscle recovery. Like, that's my, like, good space for protein intake. Like, when I go on vacation, even when I overeat, I'm not hitting at 200 grams. There's no way. I'm not yeah. having a 50-gram no. protein. that's intentional. Yeah, you have to think of and it. This, it's just not ha having a lot of yeah. calories, but not a lot of calories. Calories, for sure. And this is what this is what it, why it's, it's counterintuitive to do this, because... Let's say like a, a bad scenario in that three week off. Let's let's say it's not getting sick and it's just being off on vacation, and you do eat like an asshole, candy, ice cream, all the and you over it and you put on five to eight pounds. Yeah, logically it seems like the smart strategy go cut. would go on a cut and reduce calories, which I'm sure that's what he was thinking too when we were talking to this live caller. Is he probably felt a little soft? Probably felt like he put on a little bit of body fat because he fell off. Mm -hmm. But it's not. He's overeating steak and chicken. Mm -hmm. He's overeating ice cream, candy, desserts, right. French fries, you know, carbohydrates, chips, things that are easy, that are palatable, that you can easily overeat on calories, and then under eating protein. That's right. So really what probably happened, not only did you put on a couple pounds of body fat, you probably also lost Cold a water. little bit of muscle right. along the way too. And so getting back is, you know, and, and then Justin brought up another good point that I didn't even mention is the, the psychological part too. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. here I am, I'm getting back on my routine, get back in the rhythm. I'm going to be sore. It's going to be hard. I'm going to push myself that uncomfortable beginning again. Uh, why make it even more difficult on myself yeah. and restrict and be cutting? Why not feed myself accordingly? Much yeah, better you strategy. You want to have fun when you get back too. like re-energize like your, your passion for, for training. Cause it's really, it's, if not, it's work, you know, it's in why like come right back in with that kind of energy where it's like, well, I'm just going to get back into the routine and the drudgery and the That's work right. of it. Like, let's have fun with this. And then, you know, all these other benefits are going to happen anyway. That's right. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right. Back to the show. There's two levers. There's a lot of levers that you you work with and maneuver when you're manipulating things to change your physique, your performance, strength, etc. But there, but some of these levers are connected in the sense that they're inversely related. So one goes down, the other one tends to go up. What is that? Like volume and intensity. Like if my volume goes up, my intensity has to go down, vice versa. You almost never increase both at the same time. But then there's some levers that are connected to where they have to move at the same time. And one of those is calories and volume and intensity. If my calories go down, my volume and intensity also go down. What a lot of people do is they drop their calories and then try to move up the lever that says they work out harder and longer. Big mistake. So if come off a layoff, your body's already sensitive to exercise. You haven't worked out for a month. The, the damage that exercise normally causes you is going to be higher. So now I'm going to go cut my calories and damage my body more. You're setting yourself up for total failure. So yep. Now, if you're listening to this and you're like, this is so counter, this yeah. is so counter from what I thought was true. Well, this is why most people don't achieve fitness goals. It's not because it's hard in the sense that it's hard. Consistency is hard. I get that. It's, it's that people do everything wrong. And when you do everything wrong, it's impossible. When you do things right, what ends up happening is, and this is how it'll feel for you, when you do things the right way, if you've done things wrong the, 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 for, for a long time, when you start to do things right, here's what it feels like. This, I used to love this comment from clients. My body's changing, and it feels like I'm yeah. not really working that hard. Or I'm losing body fat, and it feels like it's just happening. Like, There's what's nothing going on? worse than working really hard and not getting a right. result. Yep. You know, it's, and that's like one of the biggest indicators of when a client is like, I'm just done. Like, this is, I'm just totally. not for me, you know, whatever it is. But yeah, it's uh, putting them on a plan that's actually going to benefit them and show them a result. Right. And it's so much better. Speaking of along these lines, I did a, a post earlier uh, about fitness that I think it resonated a lot. And it's along the lines of what we've communicated in the past. I just worded it a little differently. I'll let you guys, I'll, I'll kind of let you guys know what I wrote. I'd love your thoughts on this. I would have never understood this in the first half of my career, but later I really started to figure this out. And really, I think this is the, 
this is part or, or largely the key to long-term success when it comes to fitness. So here's what I put. I labeled good fitness and bad fitness. Good fitness is health, vitality, and it supports your energy for things that improve the quality of your life, which include things like being with your family, service to others, et cetera, things that we know that bring real quality of life. That's good fitness. Bad fitness, sex appeal, ego, self-centered body worship. Now, the problem is most people approach fitness for improved sex appeal, for their ego, and to worship their body. And they miss out on all those other things I talked about, which are what make what really can make fitness this lifelong journey and pursuit that really sticks with you. Now, the irony is, well, here's the irony. If you chase sex appeal, ego, and you worship your body, you will lose all those things, and you'll also lose your health vitality and energy for service and, and help for others. On the flip side, you go for health, you go for vitality, you, you try to make yourself a better human so you can do the things that really improve the quality of life, you're going to be sexier, your body's going to look better, you get all those things that you were chasing before. You should put that post in our trainer form. I think oh, it's a really good trainer. For, to tell their clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because I think, um, I mean, I 100% agree. Mm -hmm. And I do think that this is our responsibility as coaches and trainers, right, is to help that. Because it's really tough for somebody who's been out of shape most of their life or, or, or riddled with all these health issues because of they've eaten poorly and not exercise and they now need to make change. Um getting to that level, it, it takes time. And before yeah. you are, you know, cause initially it's like, I got to solve this health issue or it's, I, just look I don't different. like the way I look. Yeah. And so many times that's the initial driver that gets them to make the decision to make change, mm -hmm. which is, it's good. It's moving in at least the right, a better direction than they're currently moving at, but it's not the final destination and it's not where you want to keep that person. And it really takes good coaches and trainers, uh, Th this this uh, ability to do this with people, right, is to be able to communicate to them that, hey, it's okay that this got you in the door and we're working toward this way. And it's okay that you kind of initially set your goal there, but we eventually want to move away from this being the main target yeah. because it will uh, uh, yeah, lead you down the wrong path. The core of it is what you're talking about. Like yeah. these are all the surface layers that, you know, we need to peel back and get to that point. Well, this is the the true north that we should be focused on. Yeah, well, you know where you where you hear this and where I – where I started to hear this first, although it took me a while to still figure it out for myself. And in some ways, I'm going to be very honest, this is a lesson I have to continue to teach myself because uh, the whole body image, self-worship, ego, like it's always a struggle. I think it's always going to be a struggle. Um, I think that's a struggle uh, of the world. But I remember first hearing this from old members of my gyms that I managed who were consistent and trainers that I'd met who'd been trainers for a long time that seemed to have it all together. And what I mean by that is I'd see these trainers. I remember one in particular that worked for me. This woman, she was at the time, at the time she might've been like 48 or 49 and I was in my 20s. So for someone in your 20s, when you see someone 48, 49, who, who's really fit and energetic and looks good, but, but it's a natural fitness and health. She wasn't like, you know, where she had like lots of plastic surgery and whatever. She was just very naturally healthy, very naturally fit, very energetic, effective with her clients. Her clients really loved her. Um, she exemplified this. And I would see this. She didn't even have to communicate it to me. I'd see it. Like, man, that, she's got it together. Like, she's doing this. And she looks so good. And she's so vibrant because she's really figured this out. And you could tell she had a real passion for the vitality and the energy uh, and the health that the fitness provided. You could tell she wasn't worshiping her body. She wasn't trying to show. It was just... It was just evident. And also the members, I would interview, uh, not officially, but I would always go up to members who are a lot older than, than I was, who are really consistent, especially my morning members. When you, when you run gyms, the morning people are the most consistent. And in that morning crew, there's always, always, for any gym owners uh, or managers uh, listening right now, you know what I'm talking about. You always have those older members that work out 6 a.m. or so that are real consistent, seem to be pretty fit, who are like in their 60s. And I'd see them and I'd know them because I'd sometimes come in the morning and I'd see the same people. And I would always ask them like, why do you, why do you do this? Like what, how long have you been doing this? How long have you been consistent? What do you love about it? And none of them said, oh, it makes me look uh, amazing or it's my biceps or my abs. It was always like, oh man, I just, I love doing it. I feel so good. I, I'm so vibrant. And then they would always share their age. This is another thing I've shared on the podcast before. 
older people who are fit and healthy and have figured yeah, it out. Proud of their age. Can't yeah. wait to tell you all day. They want to tell you. Yeah, they can't. Not, men, women, it doesn't away matter. From it. <laughs> I, I mean, you never get a, a, a older man or woman, or especially woman, come up to you and tell you, by the way, I'm 58 years old. You get a 58 year old woman who's fit and healthy, been exercised for a, she's going to wait for the opportunity to oh, tell yeah. you. So true. Well, and so when I would hear that, I'd see that. It's like, great oh, bragging rights. Yeah. I mean, I'll give it to them. Yeah. And they figure it out. You know, the other thing that's kind of cool that I think I've slowly pieced together uh, on my own personal journey uh, as we've aged, right? Um, and lifting for a long time is the more that you, you work towards the just being healthy. And making that being your driver, right? I'm a, to being a, a better dad, a better person, a healthier, strong, mobile, good sleep th th versus how's my abs look, yeah, how big yeah. are my biceps, like versus that, how much actually easier it is. When you are trying to force towards a, a, a crazy goal, yeah. you know, to get your body to a, a PR thing or to look a certain way and you're, you're trying every edge and it's like, you're almost like you're forcing yourself to get there. And it's, you actually work so hard to try and achieve that when you're just, I'm going, I'm going about this to be healthy and a better version of myself. I'm not chasing some crazy PR, I'm not chasing some crazy look. I just want to be healthy. And so the decisions I make around food, the decisions I make around exercise, they're better anyway. They're, they, it, they're easier. It's, yeah. You know why it's easier, Adam? It's because the value is evident. Whereas when you're chasing aesthetics and the look, it feels so hard because in reality, you never really get what you think you're going to get. Like, oh, I want to look super hot at the beach. Yeah. And and you don't really get like, okay, a few people look at me, but I'm still not happy. And so it's like this struggle. You're just like never satisfied. Whereas well, if like you're playing with your kids on the floor and you're like, oh my God, it's hard for me to like it's be also, on the floor. And then you help yourself with that. It's easy because the, the value is so It's low. also because you're like, driving or hitting a golf club and you're you're gripping the steering wheel so tight oh yeah when you want something so bad like yeah. it's because you're, you're and you overcorrect yeah. and you over throttle you know or you over swing you overpower instead it's more of a finesse thing when you are about health and it's more about like right. uh, living a better life and being a vet better version of yourself and you and you and you and you chase it or you pursue it like that it's a much looser, lighter, easier balanced. approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, you're not gripping the wheel so hard. You're not trying to yeah. muscle your way to force to get there. You're 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 much you're much more likely to make healthier, better decisions. And you're working, you're more likely to be working with your body against against it instead of against it. It's peace. Trying to will its way to your to your superficial goal that you have. Yeah, it's, you're at peace. It's a bit ironic. Isn't it funny? Yeah. I know. I wish yeah. I learned that as a young person. Yeah, yeah. All right. I gotta talk, I gotta say something because uh, I, I've been I've been noticing this. I've been seeing what they're doing, and I've been you know kind of talking about them, praising them a little bit. But now I see very clearly that Organifi has figured out they are really trendsetters for sure. Like they, they okay they, they did their the code. Shilajit gummies. When I saw that, you know how hyped I was, and I'm like, oh, and now you got all these copycats. Then they did their Happy Drops gummies, and and by the yeah. way, these are like supplement categories that were not let big and then Organifi said we're going to go in there no and we're going to make it big yeah. who's heard of like saffron to be like Bro, uh, something excited they, about they did it again dude so they send us this these better biome gummies first of all if you were going to start a supplement company and you want to sell a supplement and you're looking at the market you would not think to yourself i'm going to make a better biome so i'm going to make a supplement for with with prebiotics it's a huge market you wouldn't do that but there's a lot of value in that that's what they did and i'm looking at the ingredients and this is going to crush this is going to for sure crush. So what they did is they've made a supplement in gummy form that you take before you eat that encourages the proliferation of healthy bacteria and reduces the proliferation of bad bacteria. So now what's the value of that? Well, your digestion is improved. You enhance things like fat loss, reduce things like bloating. By the way, the data on this is very interesting. Uh, apple cider vinegar, which I thought got overhyped, which is true. It still get overhyped. They went crazy with it. But the truth is, st for example, this contains some apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar in some studies showed weight loss. Like, what the hell? How does it cause weight loss? Well, it, it promotes better gut bacteria in the mm. gut. And for some people, that will definitely help definitely with weight loss. People, yeah. Then they put uh, uh, New Zealand gold kiwi fruit, which has these prebiotic fibers which have been shown to be beneficial to feed healthy bacteria. So you take this before you eat a meal, and it's not a probiotic, so it's not bacteria. It just helps your body and your gut do what it's supposed to do as like a pre-food 
kind of supplement. Interesting. And I I'm, I looked at it. I'm like, what? Is that digestive <laughs> enzymes too, or no? No, no. no say, although yeah, although apple cider vinegar will have some of that as well. Yeah. It's really about optimizing the environment of the gut to encourage good bacteria and discourage bad bacteria. And then there's lots of, for example, if you take this and then eat, you'll probably get a lower insulin spike. Again, the data will support this. So you get a better insulin response, which means you'll get better, yeah. you know, less cravings, you'll get better energy. Uh, again, better bacteria, less bloat, less inflammation. Like they're going to, again, and there's going to be copycats. Mark my words. It, a, apple, cin or, uh, apple cinnamon, apple vinegar. <laughs> I'm, apple I'm cinnamon hungry. Vinegar. <laughs> uh, wasn't that the, the, the idea there was to, to take it before a meal. Yes. Uh, so that way it stimulates your acid at the right timing. That's the other yeah, part of it. Right. That also I mean, helps. That was something I was experimenting with. Oh, I thought while. it was a first thing in the morning thing. Also. That, yeah, yeah. there was. Apparently, there's a whole philosophies of they usage. went crazy with it, yeah, because there was data supporting it, and so of course, with the like always, the, yeah, I did try that though, and yeah. it, minimal impact, but. yeah, yeah. So it'll help with um, I can't remember the acid you produce in your gut for some reason. It, it, it's hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. So it helps with that. So it's a pre-food supplement, and they're, they're gummies because they're going to figure it out. People like gummies. Okay, so <laughs> does it become yeah. more or less important uh, with the type of meal you have? Meaning. Uh, obviously, you eat it before any sort of meal. Yeah. But let's say I have one meal, which is like chicken rice, uh, and which would be like a staple meal that I eat, eating it before that, versus uh, Five Guys burger, cheese, cheeseburger, <laughs> and French fries. I'm, I'm, I'm asking this because uh, I, one of the things I used to notice when I would take probiotics is oh, it I would see. mitigate some of the, the bloat, the water retention by doing that beforehand. And I found that that was- Yeah, I, the short answer is yes, but I want to be careful with that because it's not going to fix your shitty meal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I want to be very careful. But that, yes, you're, you're going to get less of the negative- Minimize the damage. Crappy right? feeling that you'll get from a bad meal from something like this. Okay. Yeah. And, but as look, as a supplement company, they're brilliant because I think people are going to like the taste of it. Tastes really good. They're going to like the effects. Well, you know, of it. it's good for you. It's just like it hasn't been in in a packaged up kind of version. Like I mean, this. and it, and then they hey, attach it to meals. Hey, yeah, getting, we're have. getting close here that I almost have a full bag of gummy bears that I can eat. In an entire <laughs> you got all the gummy. <laughs> He got, it's hey, in the pill hey, case. He I'm just calling has, like, that gummy. Hey, like, that's sack. the next move. Is like an actual package, Dude. like gummy bear package, It'll but it has all the different ones. Yeah. <laughs> so the afternoon, evening. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so throughout the day, gummy I can bear just, sack. Yeah. Can have my gummy bears all day long. Oh. So yum. I love gummy. They're, they're candies, on to too. something. That's they're my favorite. Something. I'm a gummy candy fanatic. Dude. I love it. I love it. It's so funny. Yesterday, speaking of candy, I'm gonna out myself here real quick. Uh, so I, tough time with home, my whole family, right? My, my grandmother passed away. So I'm going through these ups and downs and emotions, very, very challenging. Um, sometimes. So last night I'm at home and my wife went to, um, she's, she's doing this women's group right now with the church, which is incredible. I'll, I'll talk more about it as I get more information, but she came back last night, met some incredible women. It was really cool. Right. So, but anyway, she was there. I'm home alone. My, my 15 year old's got homework. So I'm by myself and I'm feeling shitty, man. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling real sad. Missing my grandma. You know, I'm like, oh, you know, and so I did what I normally don't ever do is I just said, I'm going to eat candy <laughs> to make myself feel better. Yeah. So I door dashed Reese's Pieces candy, oh, so you just except I left the it address. It didn't come to your house. To work. That's the worst. <laughs> so I get a text with, I get a, I get a text from, first off, I get the picture from DoorDash and it's Dylan holding the candy. Yeah. On the door, I'm like, oh, now everybody at work Thanks, knows. Hey, now all my employees know I ordered candy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell them, He's a know. closet Reese's eater. <laughs> I got to get excuse. Now you got to announce it, dude. Yeah. Now you got to announce it. So I, I can't tell you my how staff time. knows I ordered. Oh, candy. I can't tell you how many times that's happened to Katrina and I, where we we that's the one candy you'll get. Have this yeah. address because I door dashed earlier in the day, and then she orders dinner for the family, and then it gets sent over here. Like, oh man, just text the staff. Just see staff. Yeah, yeah. See, food. If, see if the staff is there. Somebody get. Somebody just got a free meal because we're not going all the way over to go get it. So it happens all the time. That's so. That's so annoying. Yeah. Um, so um, we were gonna have um, Nick Andrews call in to talk to us about um, Intera's new peptide-based uh, product. So uh, do we? Can we do that now, Doug? Or we should wait to the end? Let's no, we'll do it right now. Nick, good to see you again. So quick question, what is in the beard serum you guys are selling? Uh, I've been using it and hair growth is faster and dare I say a little darker. Uh, so what, what's in the beard serum that's making that happen? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, and I'm super excited you uh, mentioned that. Um, the beard serum is uh, two parts. So we have the Renew Serum and then we have the Elixir. 
The serum is oil-based grapeseed oil. It's a dry oil, so it keeps your beard soft, moisturized, uh, you know, without being greasy or messy or anything. But it actually has C60, carbon 60 in it. Carbon 60 is an antioxidant, it's about 172 times more effective than vitamin C. And it also actually boosts mitochondrial function in the skin. And, you know, anybody listening to you guys knows that, that that's key for hair growth, hair quality, skin health. Okay. So then the other one, the elixir, that's where you're seeing the darkness increase. So we're hitting two angles there. So you have some general skincare aspects. So you have hyaluronic acid, um, niacinamide, which is increasing blood flow, which is critical for hair quality, hair growth. You have some ceramides, general skin protection for quality of skin. And then the real magic is coming in with the peptides. So we have uh, GHK, not GHKCU, that's different, GHK. Then we have biotin GHK, and both those are stimulating and improving hair growth through a couple of different levels. But the cool thing is, it's not just at the surface, that works at the cellular level. And then the magic you're seeing with the pigmentation is actually coming from acetohexapeptide 1. So that actually increases melanogenesis mm. pigment cells. So you know, like me, whether you get a little older, get a little less color in your facial hair, um, it may not completely bring it back, but it either slows it down or will darken it. In my case, I've noticed some increased pigment as well from using it. Now, yeah. is there any value in somebody actually even using that on their head because it does that? If you have a lot of gray hair, would you benefit from doing that too? Yeah, you absolutely could. I mean, the beard oil, honestly, I use it in my hair in the morning after uh, I shower as well. And my hair is... My hair is normally dry and kind of frizzy, but I put that a little bit on my hand and rub it through, and it's I'm good. Okay, so the GHK, why not CU? I know CU is for copper, so it's the peptide without the copper added to it, or why is it that versus the GHK CU, which is what we always hear about? Right, so when you have the copper attached to GHK, that focuses more on healing and regeneration mechanisms. And GHK by itself focuses more on collagen production and the extracellular matrix, which are the parts that really support the hair and allow it to have a, a sol kind of like a true tree, a uh, nice solid root system to uh, grow and grow healthy. Awesome. Is this the main thing that separates? Because uh, it feels like there's, I feel like I see beard oil stuff popping up all over the place. Does, is anybody else, you have competitors that are doing the same, th same thing with peptides, or is this the main thing that differentiates you guys from everybody else? I have not seen anybody else doing it, and this is actually why we did it, because people are like, hey, you got a great product for our hair, um, but what can we do for our, our beard? There's 100 beard oils out there. Not only, like, any oil will condition your beard, but beyond that, like, you know, hey, what's it really doing for me? Right. So the answer was, well, we can help with that. Yeah, so this would be a good, so correct me if I'm wrong, but this would be a good product for somebody who's l looking to also even out the growth of their beard. Because some people, when they try to grow facial hair, mm -hmm. it doesn't grow evenly or they'll have some areas with patchy. sparse. Yeah, a little patchy. So this would be good to give you that kind of nice uniform look. Is, is that Would that be a, a correct statement? It would be. The, the key to that, one thing everybody has to keep in mind with hair stuff is consistency is key. Um, just the physiology of hair, it takes time. So I would never tell anybody you're going to use these products and, you know, have a mountain man beard in two mm. weeks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can I get the full Burt Reynolds mustache though? I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, you know what? It, obviously, you know, a conflict of interest here, but uh, just the, the quality of my facial hair has gotten so much better using this. I, I test all my products on me before I sell them. And my beard was like a, a Brillo and like it, it would like break the, uh, you know, Brill and all that. And using that, it, it it's like soft, man. It's, it's good. Yeah, good stuff. I also noticed that so, so sometimes I break out a little bit underneath my beard. I noticed less of that. Does that have to do with the antioxidant properties? It does. Okay. So uh, it, it's a combination of the primarily the niacinamide from the serum. So you're increasing blood flow. So just the buildup of cellular debris, oils, things like that, your body can clear them easily. So you're just going to have healthier skin. And then you have the C60 acting, you know, like the super duper antioxidant, just helping your skin stay healthy, 
destroy everything that might be irritating it. All right. Now, uh, one, one more question. Uh, could a woman use this for her eyebrows? I know a lot of women have issues with they overpluck their eyebrows or whatever. Could this be something that would help with eyebrow uh, growth? Full, and fullness. Fullness. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the women who works for us, that's actually she started using it and she's like, yeah, I'm using my eyebrows and loving it. So Awesome. Very well, great. Right. Yeah, you guys, yeah. you guys Here's deliver. You guys really crush uh, with your products. And I have yet to find competitors that come close. So keep them coming, man. This is great. Best place for them to, to find the product, Nick. Yeah. So hit up the website in TerraSkinCare.com is going to be the best place to get to them. And uh, just a quick use tip, because one is water-based, one is oil-based. So generally, you'd want to apply the water-based one, the uh, the Renew Serum first, and then you would want to apply the oil after you've just thoroughly uh, worked in the water-based one. Awesome. Very good. Good deal, Great. man. Thanks for coming on, brother. I know you're real busy. You're like the mad scientist of the space. We appreciate you. <laughs> so thanks again, man. Good seeing you, Nick. Definitely. Thank you very much, guys. You got Take it, it easy. All right, so that so that was pretty cool, right? The the beard serum. Yeah, you so, need that for sure. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah you were you. officially the most cray, I believe. I so much worse. Yeah, well, you know what's no, funny? Well, Justin, I mean, if I just rub it all over my head, yeah, for sure that would help. I, you know, what's funny is that we see each other every day, so I actually don't really notice we it look at pictures, until we huh? look at pictures. Oh, I know, dude. I know. Yeah. Every time I see like a video of me or something, especially you look way better. You got no room to talk. But you the, and the, Doug, have, Sal and I are fucked. We went backwards. Well, Sal and I went backwards for sure. So <laughs> that's why I started out as a fat, dude. gangly teeth guy. Yeah. You know, like uh, there was nothing but up for me. Yeah. There, you know, was <laughs> I should have started. Very low, low barrier. I had yeah. hella hair. You know? <laughs> Everything was dark. You know? Yeah. But yeah. you're, 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 you're fitter. Hot, your hair's better. Your mustache is rocking. Your teeth are like you. You won all the way, dude. I'll finally be like attractive when I'm nice. Oh wait, Doug yeah. looks. Your face, Doug bro. looks the same age or younger. You know, so and then Sal and I just a disaster. You went fast forward. I look like half the man. Sal looks like he. Eight old Sal <laughs> and Stop. all gray, like hey, all bad. Hey, my wife was listening to an old uh, video so of me. Good. She's like, "Why does your voice sound different?" I'm like, "Oh, it totally heavier. does." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I think we all sound a little different. I uh, noticed that too. We do. I saw that clip the very one of the the very very first one that we did at uh, Katrina's mom's house, um, and Craig was there. Bunch of kids, dude. We look uh, like yeah. a bunch of kids. Uh, oh, that's sounds, cringe. Five thousand, uh, really? It's yeah. really anyway, bad. So, uh, Justin, did you see that they're making? Um, you're gonna get mad. Oh no! Yeah, you're not gonna like brace this. myself. Did you? Are you a Fight Club fan? Do you like the movie? Yeah, fight yeah, Club? of course. Right. Yeah, yeah. One of the best movies. Tyler ever. Durden, right? in my opinion, one of the best movies of all time. It's such a good movie. Great movie. Such a good movie. We don't talk about it. My kids, my older kids, love it. I introduced them to it. Uh, you know, my daughter watched it recently. She now has a Fight Club poster or whatever. They're remaking it. They're doing a remake. Why? How do you? How do you yeah. re? So you just put a bunch of. It's a, they it's nailed all, it. You know, like that. You can't remake that movie. No, that's well, okay, like, hold on. You're there's a guess. lot of movies you can remake. I'm going to give you guys. I'm going to give you guys five seconds to figure out how they would remake it. Today, think of today's Hollywood. They take movies, they remake them, and then what do they do? Welcome. It's going to be a- all women cat, all women fight club. Oh, really? They did it, and now it's an all women fight club. That's a better. At least I, I actually give them. You know what? If you're going to do it, you got to make they call it, it cat so- fight. <laughs> no, you're better no. off doing that. Than actually trying to really recreate the same storyline, like you know, here's the deal. I don't like Ghostbuster it. Fine. I don't care that it's. Ghostbuster I don't it. care that it's all women. I don't care. Here's yeah, what well, I care about: <sighs> that that's their button for every damn remake. Yeah. Let's redo a famous. Or let's see movie. on the other it's side. Let's lazy. see. Uh, let's it's say lazy. a male cow, cow, coyote ugly or something. Let's see well, a, a male whoa, version. Oh, pick something else. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like a <laughs> movie that they a already male nailed it, dude. You know, like th- there's no better. You know, you're not going to remake something, you know, better than you already did. Yeah. So what's the point? I'm so mad. It's like I hate that. You know what? They, it, they it, won't spend money they, on new ideas. They dude. remake them and then they just think that because we're going to like make it a, a women, it's going to be better. That's not what it is. It's that, a money that's not, what is it? that's not what it is. What it is, it's a it's a um, cheap hack for creators. Mm-hmm. There's already a built-in fan base yes that will go watch it because of the loyalty predict. towards fight club yeah they can predict that, that the it's numbers. just like marvel and all that, that stuff. the it's fans a, are going to watch it an, at least to critique it uh so that's maybe. A, yes oh, yeah. no. yes to hate watch it. And, and well and, <laughs> and even that that movie was such a massive hit mm-hmm. that you don't even need all of them you just need a percentage of them to go watch it and it's an automatic hit this this is the same formula that they follow with all the marvel bullshit mm, yeah. it's like it's got enough of the same thing with star wars yeah. it has enough of mm-hmm. a cult following that you only need a percentage and it's already a record-breaking movie 
So that's I hate that. It's such a hack. Yeah. And the and the the industry does it all the time where they remake a movie and they're like it has enough of a cult following that people will go watch it regardless if it's good. You know because- what it is? It's the cost of making movies has gotten so crazy. Yeah. That they this is true by the way. This is the pharmaceutical industry does the same thing and I'll connect the two. The cost of making a movie has gotten so crazy that they're they don't want to take risks. Yeah, 100%. because why would we spend a hundred million dollars? I think what's the average what's the average movie cost to make? It's ridiculous. Oh, it's insane. And and they don't want to take a risk with a new movie You're with right. a new script. They when want they something know, they, when they know that this works. If you can guarantee at least you know twenty million dollar profit, let's go with that. Even if it's not a huge profit, we guarantee. Versus this risk. Well, typically the move now is to create a long series out of it. And then they yeah. shoot it uh, with like certain characters. And then it's like, yeah. you could drag it out and keep like <laughs> the content. Like, what is it? Game of Thrones and all their different like spinoffs. Like, yeah. uh, it was like, it's a hundred and like 20 something million, you know, each episode. What? Or something like that. Yeah. It was crazy. Maybe That's, it's not actually, maybe it was the whole series. But this Check is, me on that the, one, Doug. So the pharmaceutical industry is like Either this way. because uh, the pharma industry- Yeah, instead of making a new drug. To make drug. a new drug, yeah, yeah. a drug takes, I think, a billion dollars from inception to passing all the trials to getting approved. Yeah. So when you're looking at, for example, pain, you want to you want to solve pain, you want to create a pain pill. I either can create an opiate, which I know opiates work, or I can go down this path of experimental drugs uh, that are potentially better- but why would I risk ten million, million per episode, Justin? Oh yeah, okay. ten. Yeah, I was gonna oh, say, okay. yeah, I know that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why I'm, I was like, whoa, still yeah. a lot though. I mean, yeah. ten million dollars yeah. to do a to do a single One episode. episode or something like that. Is, I wonder is, if AI is going to improve the creativity since it's going to reduce I the wonder, cost. Yeah, I wonder. Like, uh, there's got to be a place. You know how they have independent films and they have things that are like trying to launch off, but like you know, don't really make it into the popular, like we don't ever see them. Like Mm. I know YouTube has been huge for this, uh, you know, with content creators, but like just like movie ideas in general, I haven't seen anything original in so long. It's everything. Everything is hackable now. You're right. That's why everything's hackable. You're right. That you, that's, that's the new move. And that's only they're only getting, that's going to, we're going to see more and more of that crap where it's just like get five influencers that all have millions of followers, put them all in a movie. You don't even have to be able to act. Are we going to see like fitness podcast movie with people you no, it's we like, see a fitness podcast with on. three male hosts trying to copy our name type of deal. That's gonna happen. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. I'm just gonna put it out here. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody does that, it's already been done. You know, it's Italian it's guy, Mexican. Yeah, when I guy. say, hey, so when I when I when I talk uh, in interviews and stuff like that, uh, and I and they, I get asked about the business, and I and we talk about like the whole idea of three hosts. People assume that it's a good strategy. No, it's, it's not a good it's idea. It's so not. It no. is so It's not. very difficult. It's yeah. very it's very lucky that we got that it worked, the three of us. It is not a good strategy. No. It's not a good strategy at all to think that you're going to get three hosts. And, it's, and let me tell you, there, it's still somewhat of an Achilles heel for us. I mean, there's some parts of it that are nice. You know what the best part about it? We do an interview. And I know two other guys have to do some homework about that person. And so the pressure for me to have to really dive deep and keep the conversation oh, yeah, going, yeah. Right. super, cu- that, okay, that makes it easier. But that doesn't make for a better show. No. Doesn't make for a better interview. And also when it comes to like all three of us in a normal conversation, like e- having three people that ha- don't have egos that feel like they need to be the host or the main guy or what, like. It oh, is yeah. not a better strategy, even though you see people trying to replicate it. Be like, even if you just took it to like uh, one, one of us, like just your personality only, if, uh, you know, duplicated, uh, it would not work. Same South, same oh, with no. me. Like it wouldn't even, it'd be like a, a 10 minute podcast. I yep. wouldn't, if, if, <laughs> <laughs> if this didn't happen, or if we let's say we we dissolve this, right? I would never go out and go like I need to go find two, two of the hosts? guys. Yeah, Hell no though. way. I'm, I'm gonna go do this myself. It'll be a way better yeah. idea. <laughs> way better idea. Yeah, it is. I, yeah. So it's funny to me when I see other people that try and put the like the three host formula together, like it's some smart formula. It's like, nah, it's not a smart. No, it's not, not a bad smart choice. Yeah, Justin, I want to hear about. You have a personal UFO story? Oh, yes. Stop like, it. So Listen, you brought this she up. said Courtney saw a UFO. She did. And this is from her, the biggest skeptic on the planet, which is like... That's why I want to hear this. Yeah, this yeah. Is I, she makes fun of me all the time. And this is what actually makes me mad uh, because I've been waiting my whole life <laughs> to, <laughs> to see one. To see one. <laughs> and I watch the skies. You know? Like, oh, I would have been so excited. But apparently she was down in Palm Desert. I was at home with... Ethan was sick, so I didn't go down with now, her. This was recently. It was recently. Oh, yeah, this was like last, last week. weekend. Oh man, uh, yeah. And so she was down near 
um, San Diego was visiting her sister, which was close by. And I guess like, um, just was looking up in the sky as they were driving, um, on the freeway. And she was just like, Whoa, you guys see this? And she was there with her sister and her sister's boyfriend. And they were kind of like, Oh, like didn't really listen. And she was like pointing at it and was like trying to get their attention. I guess there was a, um, uh, a really bright light in the sky that was like, it was, it wasn't like one of those where it just takes off. Like immediately it was like, it was ascending up like, like at a pretty fast pace, like faster than the planes that were kind of flying out of the airport. Mm -hmm. And then it just, it kept going to the point where it went straight vertical and then it like disappeared. So it went up and then faster, faster, yeah, faster, went. faster. Then went on. I was like, you sure? What wasn't a rocket or something? She was like, that was not she a rocket. She pull out her phone. No, <sighs> I know we don't have it. I mean, that's a, uh, a, uh the the place that you would expect something like that right yeah. down in the san diego palm mm -hmm. desert type of like area right the desert and also it's near like a, a military base and yeah. you know all that kind of stuff down there they, apparently they see uh, joshua tree is around yeah. there yeah. Like, apparently it's is a hot like spot you, really? it is. yeah yeah now, it's all desert area out there so if you're if you were gonna which to me is the logic behind that is like if you were military people testing our newest yeah. technology, where would you do it? Out in the middle of these desert areas yeah. where if it were to crash or something would happen. You know, I'm like brand new drone something, yeah. you know, like because drone technology has gotten crazy. Insane. You guys seen what they are capable yes, of now? Dude, like, they're wow. insane. Dude, I just saw one uh, where they have flamethrowers attached and they were going burning just, just areas and just going over That's these trees tough. and just completely incinerating everything and i was like oh my god <laughs> like, i mean they could just remotely do this you guys have now want. seen the, you guys have seen these like uh light shows they do now yeah right, them? i mean that in itself should show you how like yeah. sophisticated the technology and they're is. all synchronized yeah. and they're yes like, to synchronize them to make all these crazy designs and i mean that's wild i you know yeah. it's funny i keep hearing it's more more and more of these ufo you know quote unquote experts are, are saying that they are not from other planets, that they're interdimensional and or some kind of where what might be labeled as demons, angels, whatever, interdimensional beings. I'm hearing more and more people refer to them that way. Now, I would have laughed at that in the past, but I don't think that's any more crazy. I, Tucker Carlson said that. He, on, on he did, and I don't think it's any more wild than then you know uh people aliens not people aliens living on another planet and using faster than light speed uh type travel in fact that one guy made the point i think i told you guys this he said if there were really aliens on another planet with faster than light speed travel they would very easily take over uh the universe with that kind of technology yeah that's what they call it type four type five civilization yeah, something like that yeah what so. uh which one of you sent over the the moon landing debunk Oh, well, that was, that that was me. That was Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you conspiracy <laughs> theorists sit over the He's debunking? old school conspiracy Okay, no, no. All joking aside, it's pretty, of it was pretty, all of the, the mainstream conspiracy theories, that one, to me, when you look into them, and all, I, look, I look at all of them. I think it's fun. They're fascinating. Mm -hmm. That one has the most, in my opinion, credibility. I think, well, it, it, we were like just joking and being tongue in cheek and we had that astronaut on yeah. and we were like trying to come kind of get something out of him and of course you know nothing but uh i honestly think that a lot of it was staged uh yes. specifically in case uh it all kind of went to hell and it backfired on yeah him. and because we had to win the thing is the stakes were so high that we put that out there we're going to the moon we're gonna be the first to move against russia you know they had to have a fail safe and we that, had to that's show the logic them I, that I our superiority, to. Our, in, our our superiority with our missile technology. Don't yes. you think? The don't you think though the so don't you think with something like that? Like at least I know if if the roles were reversed and they faked the moon landing, we would be the first fuckers to point it out and 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 debunk. We it. would try. You got to think. You would not. I mean, they're humans too. I you wonder, think, look, you think they don't care? Up? You don't think they're competitive? Yeah. You don't think they dug deep to try and debunk that hard? And do we know that that you know maybe they had a lot of like uh, yeah. information in Russia? I mean, that see, was internet like, today. I would think they would get over to us by now. But you, you know, know there's two. Like, I think there's Russia, two motivations. I don't know. Dude, there's, they, there's a lot of media there. We don't get. Yeah, and there's a few motivations. One is to trick the Soviets, but the others is to trick the people. And tricking the people, I think, is just as important. You want the people be to believe we have that superiority. 
Yeah, uh, I know, but that, that's that highlights again even more the yeah. reason why the Russians would be so motivated to prove us wrong, to prove that we were wrong. We faked it, and so I just don't see them getting beat and then them going like, "Oh yeah, that was a, a for sure video." You got to think for sure. Yeah, somebody during that time was like, "They're faking. That's not real. The yeah. shadows don't align." There's got and they must have went down the rabbit hole themselves. Yeah. So we get, we got to be able to prove this false. Yeah, so I, I think we, it's just and we shared the space station with them, right? And so it's I mean we've done a lot of like like sharing of information. No already. one's ever been in the moon besides us, right? We're the only ones. Supposedly, uh, as didn't far India as people, just go there? I thought China or India went. No, no, yeah, but maybe person. one of their yeah. I don't know. Not about like a, not, not like a, a probe, probe, but an actual person. No. Has any other people? Maybe been? not. I don't think so. I know why they, Doug they said that one now. He's the he's the light guy. He likes the light the light theory that that the, well, the shadows. He's, he's he's yeah he's he's into lights and yeah, yeah, lighting yeah, and photos. Yeah, yeah. Too, yeah, it's almost like there's like a stage lighting right because yeah. of the shadowing. Yeah. But also, you know, it's a really and this is again, I I'll, I'll just add a little more salt into here. Um, <laughs> up in like Canada, there's this area that's like eerily the same exact terrain. As if moon? you just change the change the uh, lighting of it, so you just black out the the background, so you don't have any of the blue, you know, atmosphere, and then you you change it so the coloring a little bit of the the actual landscape, it is identical. Is They've it, taken pictures of it. You're didn't like, the director of who's the director of Full Metal Jacket, Doug? Uh, Kubrick. Kubrick. Yeah, he's didn't he his deathbed. on his deathbed admit to helping the U.S. government? That's what he There's said. There's a video yeah. of it. There's mm -hmm. a video of him saying on his deathbed, maybe a video, but, but maybe he was just messing with us, right? But he's like, knows, no, no, yeah. I, I helped. I Imagine helped that. It's like the best prank ever on your way out. Like, That's oh, like a total Kubrick move. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 you guys ever <laughs> think that? You ever think to yourself like, on my deathbed, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna <laughs> tell people, I'm gonna mess with somebody. I say no. I buried a million dollars out in the desert of whatever. Yeah, I'll make a pack right now. I'm just gonna make up the most like crazy thing ever like i did that you but know? you can also you can also <laughs> tell people to do things and you know they'd feel compelled you know what i mean like something you like you'd look at your friend and be like i want you to Bro, imagine on your death want you to if lose you told pounds. people <laughs> that out in the middle of some <laughs> desert you buried 10 million dollars that's mean you would try, you, that would be like <laughs> everybody would be hunting dig in. yes they'll dude. find something yeah. no I, you know? I, would, I was thinking more the line, along the lines of you get people to do things you've always wanted them to do but yeah. now because you're on a deathbed they feel compelled uh, like you look uh, at your friend you want them to get healthy yeah, like, yeah my my wish on my deathbed is that you lose 50 pounds and get in shape and compete in a oh. body, you know well that's yeah. like a positive thing they're like oh fuck I was thinking about yeah. fucking with people yeah. you're, you're mean <laughs> I can't do it <laughs> wake up <laughs> doctors wake him up why uh, he was about to tell me where the, where the money is yeah, yeah. that's messed up hey speaking of uh, <laughs> of Russia did you see that they caught well, they, well it died actually it's kind of sad there was a Russian spy whale what Doug, <laughs> What's they trained a whale it, to be a spy? That's Bro, right. they did that with dolphins way they back did. in the day, too. Doug, Google Russian with spy torpedoes. whale. torpedoes. What magazines are you guys prescribe or, or subscribe to? Magazine. Nobody reads magazines. No, it's like... Yeah, where's... Weird, dude. Okay. Our, war, Justin, war, yes. our algorithms are surviving. Listen, I know. That's the, like, why it's yeah, bad. Special, dude, I've always been fascinated by, like... Um, you know the, the the sects of the military where they have like special forces and like like things that, and so they've used animals for uh, a lot of these like spy missions and things and like they use dolphins to, to with uh, torpedoes. They did look at see told you Russian spy beluga whale yeah. was found dead had multiple bullet wounds so it had like a it had like a device <laughs> around its neck that they linked to Russia and it was spying I don't remember where it was spying. But look how look at that cute! What a cute whale! Yeah, belugas are the cutest. Did I ever tell you the big fight Jessica and I got into one time about whales? I said the stupidest thing, and I didn't mean it the way it sounds. You say she looked like a whale. Did call her a beluga. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> First of all, I hope all, she whooped your ass. Listen, yeah, listen I mean, to me. Listen, nice she's gonna be even mad listening to this. <laughs> Beluga whales are adorable. Look oh at their my face. God, you told your no, no, look at their face. Bro. They're the cutest face ever. <laughs> and so I said something along those lines that she's cute. Oh, beluga whale, so cute like you. She's like, did you call me a whale? <laughs> she was pregnant at the time. Oh, oh my God. It's the stupid. Oh, I, and I, when I said it as it's coming out of my mouth, and then the worst part is I was trying to defend myself. It's like, yeah. I didn't mean it that way. Too yeah. Late. Yeah, you, yeah. My yeah. kids were mad at me. Oh, my Everybody God. What did you say? Did you say she... I didn't mean it that way. Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> stupid. Yeah, yeah. She's you're eating an anchovy. Oh. I wasn't saying that you're... <laughs> not nah, you were trying to defend oh myself. Oh, my God. <laughs> They're adorable. Look at them. Look how yeah. cute their faces. Wow. They're so cute. It's a cute, one of the cutest yeah. animals. So who shot it? I mean, do they know? They don't know. 
Yeah, they don't know. Interesting, right? Like you, uh, the first thing I wouldn't, at least I wouldn't think. It feels if so I saw, bad shooting if, a little whale. If I saw a whale pop yeah. up and he had some stuff on its thing, I wouldn't think, I better shoot it, it's probably a Russian spy. Like, <laughs> yeah. Is, 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 like, is well, it's a scientific uh, tracking device that's or something. Right? Yeah, that's yeah, the like, first thing that comes to mind yeah. to me. It's probably it's like some sort of a tracking thing. I'm not thinking like, oh, Russian spy. <laughs> like yeah. who's, they had to have known about I it and been tracking knew. it. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think sure. they knew what it was. They shot it. Then nobody wants to say, that they sh nobody would have a problem by the way we shot an actual russian spy everybody like, oh, yeah but it, we shot a, a russian spy whale you bastards no so nobody's gonna admit i bet you you're so right of course yeah and you're so right if it was like a person nobody would care oh, we, that's hilarious no but because it's a you know a little whale oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened we knew about it we tracked that shit down we killed it but yeah. we ain't gonna tell everybody we no killed it. Yeah. and the russians know too we'll send a whale over that way everyone's mad <laughs> they, but they, hey, yeah, you know yeah. america really well yeah. 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 using our our What's woke our woke weakness yeah well We'll send PETA out there. What's up with this low tech them. shit? We had the Chinese balloon, right? And then we got whale. Like, what are they doing to us? I don't know. They're, they're messing with us. Yeah, with it's all. It's, you know what it is? It makes us to think that they're that that far back. We're like, God, these guys are using whales and their hot air balloons. <laughs> <laughs> we got all these crazy drones and UFOs that we're using over here and stuff like that. That's they're just, they're playing with us, man. They're <laughs> they got us, elephant tanks. They're make, yeah, they're they're making us think they're making us think that they're like a hundred years behind still. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, have, they have catapults, <laughs> really rocks, and don donkey launchers. Oh my god. God. Hey, oh my God. did you see that human catapult that I, I shared on my that's, story? That's, uh, you know how hard that would Bro, yeah, that'd I would want you to do, do that? that? I would totally do that. Dude, I would do that. I've got to feel crazy. They're I mean, launching them far and fast. Yeah, would that hurt? Like, I'm, I'm wondering. The, well, you've the done entry. the blob. Haven't you done yeah. the blob before? Yeah. I mean, What's that's, the blob? Is that that big thing? You yeah, like, jumps I on? guess it's if you if you uh, get scared and you kind of lose your balance in the air, you can really Yeah, well, yeah if, you go, if you pancake, you know what I'm saying? Or what if something gets caught in it as it's pulling you up with the bands? Oh, God, don't say that. You know what I mean? It looks cool Ooh, though. Yeah. I would do that. I would do that for sure. Yeah, There's a chair that poosh, I take that back. Maybe you. as a kid I would, I would let you guys. There's a lot of things I I would do before but maybe not. You would do. you would get hurt. Yes. Yeah. Probably as a result. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. <dude. laughs> Your, your at least my last oh, injury was my cool. Was. At least I was doing something cool. <laughs> so this last yes, time. I've said that the other day. I, I, did I tell you I, I learned how to ollie finally? You on did. The skateboard? Yeah, and my son taught me, which was so great. Are you? Are That's you? Can cool. you do it whenever you want? Yeah, you I can do good? it like consistently now. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not like great, but it's it, it gets hard. all four are wheels gonna, off. Bro, are you gonna build a little half pipe for your son or what? Well, yeah. Well, I take him down to the uh, skate park all the time. Oh, they got a good one over there. Uh, right? Yeah. So th that's the thing. They didn't have those when we were growing up, you yeah. know. And it's like, man, this would have been. Is sick. he is he kick flipping yet, or is that the next? The next. That's thing? the next one that he's he's working on. So, His ollies. He he actually can can um so he can move and he can ollie on like over things. Oh, wow. Like I can't. So I do attribute that. this. I'm curious what you. Thing. I treat like this is the cool part of YouTube. Yeah, I feel like yeah. if we yeah. were kids, this is the type of stuff. Like, he's he's doing it. I, he's always he's using doing. it. He I guarantee that's like yeah. Like you had to and have you just, had to meet a kid yeah. who could do the trick, who could then teach you. Yes. Or like what we used to do with wakeboard, older brother watch like VHS te tapes. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we used to do that like crazy, watching uh, wakeboard videos, trying to figure out and unpack the tricks that they were doing, yeah. and then we go out and try and do it. Like YouTube is so much better but for stuff like that. You talk about embarrassing, right? So the next day, my back was like almost frozen. Yeah. You know, I was just oh like, yeah. Ugh. Like I can barely move, and then I was like, I can't. Like, and then that's the thing. It's like I at least I'm trying to do something where it's like I'm just getting out of bed, and I'm like, oh, the same feeling. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, that's not as bad as me when I'm, I watch the kids all day and my back hurts. I'm like, why? Yeah. <laughs> I just watch my exactly kids. do something cool. I play with my little <laughs> kids. My daughter. You know what it is? My little daughter is having me play with dolls with her, and I'm bending over all day, and we're playing. And then later in the day, I'm like, oh. All right, more mobility work, uh, and which brings us to the beginning of, of what we said, right? Yep. Fitness for for life. No, stop, you're right. Stop training oh, yeah. for aesthetics. That's no, it. No, no, long right. term, dude. I want to be able to play longer with my kids and not feel. feel that like was my of, big motivation yep. when when we. Went I remember down, that's yeah. why you started squatting mm -hmm, so deep, right? Mm -hmm. So you could play with yourself. And I tell you what, I, I look I look back now it was one of the the best things I ever did was to kind of transition in that di direction away from bodybuilder meathead guy yeah. and, and and move in that direction. And the the bit the best takeaway that I got from it that I I guess I didn't I didn't go in thinking this way or anticipate this was that once I regained that range of motion, mobility and strength, maintaining it is really easy. Yeah. So it was a lot of work to gain back that range of motion. It was a lot of work to yeah. get comfortable down in the squat. But then once I got down there, 
to keep it was way easier. And so that's the the best thing from that. that and that what I always try and tell somebody who's on the fence of like, oh, I know I need to do this work and it's, oh, it's so tedious and oh, I don't want to do it. And it's just like, the cool part is if you really truly dedicate some time and effort to getting getting through that, keeping it is way easier, way, way easier. hundred percent. Yeah. All right, today's shout out. So I love this dude's videos on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, he does this challenge. And I first saw his videos a while ago where he says, take me down for $1,000. Now, oh, is I, this I'm, the wrestler kid? Yes. His name is uh, Giorgio oh, yeah. Poulos. So I've seen that. It's Giorgio and then P-O-U-L-L-A-S. You find him on Instagram. You can see him on YouTube. Uh, I you know I was I did judo and jujitsu. I did some wrestling. I'm a grappler. So I can see when someone's good, when someone's not. This kid, this guy is amazing. He, the way he moves and stays on his feet and, and reverses people is like exceptional. Is he, he fa is he the famous one who embarrassed the the famous big bodyguard guy? I don't know. There's a famous like celebrity bodyguard guy that's like high paid bodyguard. And he's huge, big old Jack mm -hmm. Black guy, and he's jacked. And I think he even does jujitsu or something. Were they on like uh, turf? Yeah, I think turf? you're right. I, yeah. I, I, I don't remember what they were on, but I remember it was like a big deal because he's like he is. He was like this famous bodyguard dude, and he's like marketed himself on social media, and he's all jacked. I think he does jujitsu also, and and then he's like half his size, a quarter of his well, size. Well, I gotta say, I gotta say this too for all the athletes out there. Like wrestlers are, especially when you're good, you're like like D one college level. If you're like really really good you get to like that olympic level you're on another level of uh of athlete and wrestlers are just yeah they're insane you yeah. don't want to tangle with a good wrestler because they'll they'll put you on Strength, your head stamina they got everything everything yeah, dude crazy. and they're balanced and it's just insane so watching him go against dudes and then they'll get them but they don't he, he turns it around he went against one kid one kid lied to him and said oh i just did a little high school wrestling but it was actually a state champion so they start going, and you could see, uh oh, he's actually pretty good. Uh, yeah, and then after, no, he beat him. He still won, he but afterwards, yeah. the guy, the kid, told him, "Oh, I'm actually a." Has he lost? Has anyone got him or anything? I haven't seen him. I don't know if he's ever, if he has, but he hasn't posted it. All the ones he posted, what, he, he won. What level did he get to? Did he say? No, it's a good. I haven't looked him up. He's got to be a high. He's very high level. Wrestler. Well, yeah, obviously. very high level when you watch him. Smart. State and Liberty makes formal wear that was designed for athletic build men. If you got muscles, if you got delts, if you have a tighter waist, you got bigger legs, you're probably frustrated every time you buy a suit or a dress shirt or something to look nice when you go out with your wife or hang out with your buddies. State and Liberty was designed just for you. In fact, I can wear their suits off the rack. They fit me perfectly. I don't feel like I'm swimming in my jacket at my waist while meanwhile my arms and shoulders are going to explode out of my jacket. Everything fits nicely, looks good. Go check it out. Go get a discount. Go to mpstateandliberty.com. Use the code MPUMP15. You'll get 15% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Matt from Colorado. What's up, Matt? How can we help you? What's up, buddy? Hey guys, uh, it's so awesome to be on the show. Um, thanks for having me. Before I ask my question, uh, I just wanted to say um, thank you for the positive influence. Um, I thought I was pretty good at um, listening to people and being generous and patient and gracious with my time in uh, my own professional life. And then I started listening to you guys about three years ago and realized I had a long way to go. So just wanted to say thank you for the huge influence in that respect and making me better. Thanks, thanks Matt. Man. That's Appreciate nice. That. Very nice compliment. Awesome. So uh, the question I wanted to ask is, um, I'm a 37-year-old father and emergency physician. Um, and based on listening to you guys for the last few years, I, I think your advice for my lifestyle and schedule would be to do MAPS 15. Um, I tend to work four to five morning shifts, uh, which is like 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., four to five evening shifts, which is like 3 p.m. to 11 p.m., and then really anywhere from one to four overnight shifts, which is 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., uh, every month. And I will be doing that for at least 13 years before I age out of night shifts or, or, uh, change my career. Um, so, uh, with my constantly changing sleep time, I also have a four month old and a two year old. I try to be as present as possible with my wife and my kids. Um, I'm pretty good about diet, um, consistency with working out, uh, and sleep hygiene, but, uh, it's still a pretty big hindrance to my progress and my recovery. 
Um, I, I think for like the next year or so, you'd have me do Maps 15. I have that program um, and I, I really enjoy it. Uh, but I also want to be able to do other programs like performance, performance advance, power lift. Uh, my question was actually inspired by the performance advance launch. I really salivated when you talked about why non-athletes should do that program. Um, so uh, I have no idea how to really modify programs um, for my job's impact on my ability to sleep and recover. So I was hoping for any general teaching points on how to modify MAPS programs or if you have any other tips for uh, people that are going to be doing shift work indefinitely or difficult lifestyles. Really, really yeah, good. Great question. Good question. Okay, so two young kids, emergency room physician. I trained quite a few emergency room physicians, and you guys are just you're just made differently. Uh, I think you you guys thrive on – <laughs> adrenaline and stress. I've never met anybody that just that seems to feed off of it <laughs> as much as you guys. Um, and so you're, you're spot on with, with what you think maps 15 is going to be what you're going to be doing probably, uh, for the next 13 years or so. <clears throat> now, the way you modify your, the workouts is it's less modifying our other programs and more about modifying maps 15. That's right. So maps 15 is your format. And the modifications would look something like this. I'll swap out this exercise for this other one. I'll switch out the rep range for this other rep range. But the the skeleton, the 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 framework of it, the two exercises a day um, is going to be what it's what it's going to look like. And and the exercises swap out would be more like you know I need some more rotation. I need some more lateral exercises. Maybe I'll borrow some sled movements uh, or some body weight movements. And you can borrow exercises from other programs, but the, the programming is really going to revolve around MAPS 15. So rather than looking at our other programs and trying to make those look more like MAPS 15, you're going to take MAPS 15 and you're just going to modify exercises here and there um, based off of your goals uh, and your needs. And, and that's really it. I don't see you doing with the shift, like with the shifts that you're following, I don't see um, it being appropriate to do it, really any of our other programs except for that one. Do you do you already own Performance Advance or do you have Performance? Do you have either one of those? I have uh, Performance. I don't have Performance Advance yet. Because what we could do is we could send over to you yeah. the Performance Advance and then you literally do exactly what Sal is saying. And so there's going to be exercises in there that are yeah, unique. Just pull them in there. That are unique to Performance Advance and then you're literally looking at your MAP15 skeleton and you're like, oh, you know what? Instead of barbell back squats, I'm going to do this, you know, Bulgarian uh, split stand squats here. So you'll just literally whatever muscle group uh, that you are supposed to do in MAPS 15 that day, you can slot in a movement that you see inside of MAPS Performance Advance. That would be the easiest way uh, to do it. And then, I, I mean, I guess there would be some, uh, some, some latitude like to if you were to add, like so if there's days where you know, you want to add a small exercise uh, to that. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't get carried away with that, right? Trying to turn it into a full-blown MAPS performance program because I think we've already ag uh, already agree that the, the, the volume in MAPS 15 is probably appropriate for you. So switching just one exercise for another is probably the, the best route. Now, now, one word of caution, uh, when you switch an exercise, it's better to switch the movement and then stick with that movement for a while. In other words, don't, don't switch out all the time because there's a, a there's a, a learning curve and there's a central nervous system adaptation period that happens that you want to move into so that you can start to really reap the benefit. So let's say one of the exercises recommended in Mass 15 is, let's say it's a deadlift, but you're like, okay, I'm going to switch that out for a single leg deadlift, you know, something similar, okay? When you switch it out, don't switch it out and then go back to other things. Stay with it for like four, five, six weeks. Get good at it before deciding to move into something else. That would be the best approach. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, to all that's great. I think the very first focus after you're, you've are you been going through a cycle of Mass 15 like long enough is to really just kind of pick apart uh, lateral movements and rotational movements and have that just be the focus for like, you know, a month and, and just stick with it and stick with those that you've swapped out, you know, and then if, if you have that maps performance advanced, um, I think uh, if you go through that and you actually look at some of the skills training days, uh, there's very specific, like to move quickly is something that we kind of promote is just something that to keep, uh, as far as like an attribute, uh, that will also be preventative for injuries and things down the road. So, 
you know, something like that, where maybe a speed is a focus, maybe, you know, more power movements is a focus. But again, this would be like further down, uh, you know, as you've been training for a while doing the maps 15 format, like that would be yeah. something you could pursue, uh, you know, and just implement it for like a month and, and kind of run with that and then go right back kind of to your baseline maps 15 yeah. format. Now, now to be, um, uh, just straight up, you know, a lot of our programs are specific to uh, a, a particular type of avatar, okay? So whether it be bodybuilding or powerlifting or mobility or athleticism, MAPS 15 um, is one of those programs that's one of the most well-rounded in the way it was programmed because the idea, the avatar was the person who who is going to benefit from this kind of workout and who's going to need to work out this way. And so it wasn't necessarily a specific avatar like bodybuilding powerlifting right it was more like let's make it really well rounded so somebody could follow mm. this for a long time and not develop issues for example if you follow powerlift uh it's great for powerlifting great for deadlift squat be bench press but if you keep following powerlift over and over and over again lateral stability will start to fall off rotational strength will start to fall off you'll lose some strength stamina because it's really focused on powerlifting MAPS 15 is one of the most well-balanced programs that we have. It's one of the programs I would say <clears throat> you could probably run indefinitely, indefinitely yeah. Yeah. and you're really not going to run into problems like you would with other programs. So no, keep that in mind as well. That's exactly how we created that. The idea was, okay, if I only got 15 to 20 minutes with a client for the rest of their life and I've got to build the best program for overall health, strength, performance, all above – what would it kind of look like? Maps 15 really is. It doesn't, it doesn't have anything that's missing. Yeah. Is my point. But that being said, it doesn't mean also that you can't have maps of form advanced and see a skill or an exercise you want to learn or get good at. Right. Like, and you're like, Hey, you know Nothing what? That's, that. yeah, I want to, I, I like, I want to get good at that movement or I want to learn how to do that. Or I want to see how strong I can get in that movement. And you want to switch it out. Totally fine. But Maps 15, the way it's set up, it, you can really run that. It won't create imbalances. I think that's, yeah. the, that's the big yep. point here. Other programs can create imbalances if you don't phase out of them, but Maps 15 won't. Um, if uh, One follow-up question. If I'm on a night period, whether it's one night or two nights in a row, what I've been doing, um, uh, and I was hoping to get your take on this, is um, after I'm done with the night periods, so I'll get home at 8 a.m., sleep for four or five hours, get up that day. I won't do anything other than walk. And then my wife is pretty cool about letting me get like nine, 10 hours of sleep that next night to switch back to sleeping like a normal person. I, so I don't do any workout on that day. And that's like an off day. And then I just pick up right where Perfect. I left off as if I love that just didn't almost like list format working out if that makes sense. No, it's yeah. perfect. So like it. the way match mm -hmm. 15 is written, it's like six days in a row, but you don't have to do them in a row. It could be three days, take a couple days off start back up. You you want to take at least one or two days off a week. That's why we wrote it the way we did. But if it, it but the way you should follow yeah. it is exactly what you said. Your intuition's 100%. That's exactly what I would tell a client. Fit it to, to do. your schedule, yeah. Yes. Awesome. Thank you guys. I'm super excited to work on the landmine stuff and all the performance advanced Sick. stuff and I really appreciate your generosity. You awesome. got you got it, Matt. Real quick, are you taking any supplements to help with uh the, the stress and recovery and that kind of stuff? Yeah, uh you're you're so right that it's uh, a drop in the bucket, but I, st I still do it anyway because I think it helps. Um, so I do uh, magnesium, ashwagandha, vitamin D, a multivitamin, um, and then I use uh, low-dose melatonin sparingly to awesome. switch my schedule back when, when I need to. Nice. Um, and then uh, I do 10 grams of creatine for the the like cognitive benefits yep. with- You got it. Night's sleep. That was everything. You got it, man. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. You guys are great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You got it, man. He's, he's, on the, he's on the right track. Oh, totally on the right track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, tell you, I mean, you know this, Justin. Your wife worked in this space. Yeah. These emergency room doctors and nurses, it's like uh, they for like stress makes oh. them feel good. Yeah, <laughs> you I know? know, it's like they, juice. Yeah. It's like juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the way I used to train these doctors back in the day, because a session isn't twenty minutes; it's an hour. I train them once a week. I would train them once a week and then they would try to stay active on their own. And, and more than once a week, rarely could we do it without starting to burn them out because that schedule, that swing schedule, and then you add two little kids so on top rough of it. On the body, oh, yeah, yeah, super rough. Our next caller is Rostin from Texas. What's up, Rostin? What's going on, Rostin? How you doing? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, right. you got it, man. How can we help you? 
Yeah, you guys are a lot prettier on camera than you are with just your voices on the podcast. So. Oh, wow. Stop it. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. You've been imagining this weird. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, imagining is the right word. Yeah. Um, I, I was jumping to my question. Um, howdy from Texas. Uh, I started TRT about two months ago, and I'm wanting some guidance from y'all on if I should change anything about my training now. A little background. I run our local Habitat for Humanity, and I have a daughter with autism, so I have a decent amount of stress that's just normal for my life. I turned 40 a couple weeks ago, and I've been training on MAPS programs for almost a year and a half, which is also the entire extent of my lifting experience. I'm a former, former cardio bunny, CrossFit queen, and crash dieter who started lifting because I was tired of the yo-yo of typical weight loss attempts. Uh, I started looking at TRT when I kept gaining weight on a scale without increasing my lifts. My primary care physician tracked my dropping testosterone for a couple of years, but because it was always over 250, the last time he checked, it was over, it was in the low 300s. He didn't think an intervention was necessary. So then I went to a local hormone specialist and he tested it at just under 200 with additional low thyroid. So he prescribed both testosterone and thyroid medication. He saw an in-body or he has an in-body scan in his office. And the two months since I started those medications, I've gone up by five pounds. However, I've lost 1.5 pounds of fat and gained eight pounds of muscle with my overall body fat percentage going down by 3.4%. It's what I hoped for when I first started lifting. Um, I'm six foot two and 265 pounds. I'm a naturally really big framed guy. Um, I'm, whenever you guys talk about y'all's own bodies, I, I always vibe more of how Justin talks about his body. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm guessing a healthy weight for a reasonably lean version of me would be somewhere between 210 and 220. But I honestly have no way of knowing that since I've never been like a really fit person. I do care much more about getting lean than the weight on the scale because y'all have been consistently indoctrinating me for quite some time. I'm finishing phase three, or sorry, I'll edit this one. I just finished phase three of anabolic a couple weeks ago, and I just started a uh, uh, performance for the second time. I've also run maps 15 and 40 plus. So my question, do I just keep running the programs I've been running and continue to marvel as my body leans out? Is there something else I should try? Um, should I push myself harder now that my testosterone is finally, finally working right? which I'm 99% sure y'all are going to say no to that, but I just like asking you the question because I think you like answering it. Um, I'm also concerned that in the last six months, I haven't been specifically running a bulk, but I've gained about 25 pounds in that time without my major lifts increasing. My in-body scan says that I'm at 36% body fat. So my hunch is that you guys would suggest that I bulk given where I'm at, but I'm also like, I've gained so much in the re recent months that I'm scared, honestly, to do that uh, because of my hormone stri and stress. No, good question. And good detail. Yeah, one of the worst mistakes people make or biggest mistakes people make when they do when they go on TRT is they they change their workout routine. Um that's a that's the uh, the wrong thing to do. So here's what happens. You go on TRT, your testosterone went from low to probably normal high. Do you know by the way where you're testing now while on TRT? So it's only been two months and we just did my latest uh, labs. So after a week, so it's doing, it's just the one, the one shot a week thing. And so they tested me the morning before I got my shot and it was at like 450 for okay. that one. So okay. they bumped it up again. So I'll, I'll be, you know, I think we'll do another test in like a month and a half or two. Okay. So you're still regulating that. Okay. So um, yeah. yeah, it's a big mistake to change anything about your training. Cause here's what happens when you go from low to high normal is you're naturally going to get stronger. And that means your your volume is naturally going to increase. So even if you did the exact same workout, but now you're lifting more weight, the volume already is going to go up and start to match kind of your body's capabilities. Don't change anything. I've seen too many people go on TRT and they think, oh my God, I'm on testosterone. Now I need to go double my volume. Ramp it up. And then they just negate any of the potential benefits they get from the testosterone and burn themselves out. And the problem <laughs> is, one of the, I don't know if you consider it an advantage or disadvantage to TRT is your testosterone is high no matter what. So some of that signal uh, that I'm overtraining gets a little blunted. And so people could get uh, misdirected with this. Like, I think I feel okay, but meanwhile, they're overtraining and they're stalling the progress. Now, the lean body mass gain that you saw in the short period of time is, uh, is most likely um, uh, some intracellular water. Muscle gain, the, the lean muscle tissue gain doesn't takes a little longer to build, but that's okay. Because it's not bad, it's it, it's intracellular, um, and uh, so that's a good thing. That's why your body fat percentage went down. Is your, your your weight went up a little bit, but it wasn't fat mass, so your percentage went down as a result. 
Um, as far as losing weight goes, we would. I, I, do you track your calories? Do you know where you're at with your macros or any of that? Because that's where I would start first. Yeah, I, I've I've tracked before. I've really loved any times the times when y'all talked on y'all's podcast about like having the emphasis on just tracking the protein and not doing the calories. And like, I don't want to have all the anxiety around my weight that I've had for most of my adult life, which is one of the reasons I started listening to you guys. I like I love the way y'all talk about okay. health overall. Um, so I have not been tracking calories intentionally for the last few months, but I wouldn't be surprised if it'd be the right thing to do. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you track the protein and you do a really good job of eating whole foods, I wouldn't care that much, but I would want to know how good you are at that. Like, are you good most of the time, but then you have these, these days or nights where you kind of trail off and you eat, you have things that probably you shouldn't be eating, or are you really consistent with eating whole foods? Because to me, that would make the biggest difference on whether I felt like I needed you to track or not. Yeah, no, I mean, 99%. Okay. That if you hit protein, you said you want to weigh about 210 to 220. So I would say hit 200 grams of protein from whole foods, eat it first, avoid heavily processed food. And what'll happen, and like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm 90 plus percent positive this will happen if you do that and you follow appropriate workouts, is you're going to get leaner. You're going to slowly get leaner as you build muscle without having to track anything else. But you got to be real consistent with that, the two parts. <clears throat> Hit the protein, whole natural foods, avoid heavily processed foods. Otherwise, it really starts to throw things off. An another strategy I like to do too, uh, depending on where you're at and what I don't know um, how sedentary your job is and what your days look like, and I don't know if you're tracking steps, uh, but that's a real easy... When I have somebody who has yeah. uh, a sedentary job and they're, they're maybe moving 4,000 steps or less a day, Simply incrementally moving them up by, you know, 2,000 steps a week over the course of, you know, a few months can make a dramatic difference in that too. So I don't know if you've tracked your kind of movement in a day. Are you sedentary or do you do you move a lot? What's it look like? I'm pretty sedentary. My Our office is out in the middle of nowhere. And so like getting up and trying to go for a walk around the neighborhood would be walking on a highway. And so I've kind of tried to do, a, I've, I've, that has not felt exciting to me. And so like, yeah, but that I'm not surprised to hear you say that. I mean, there's, there's other things too. We can, we can, uh, it could become something that you try and get up before you head off to work. And when you're at home, you could do it when you get back home afterwards. Uh, they make on Amazon now, my sister just bought one, uh, one of those desks where you're kind of walking, like just the, the treadmill part, like where you're just kind of walking on that. Um, that's also a possibility. I'm, it's just an easy thing to increase total movement for the day without like, oh, prescribing cardio or prescribing a major calorie cut. Just simply doing that could make enough of a deficit for you while following what we're saying uh, without putting all this overly uh, emphasizing the calorie tracking and stuff. That's just a, a, a decent strategy. Now, you, you mentioned like performance in MAPS 15. Uh, what what are you running right now? And how did those how, how did those compare uh, to your cardio queen stuff and, and your, your CrossFit? Uh, <laughs> how did you describe it? The uh, yeah, CrossFit queen? Yeah, yeah. I can't remember uh, which phase it is in MAPS 15. I think it's uh, phase four where it, it feels most like CrossFit and it like seriously kicks my ass. Um, so like I'm doing that for the second time right now. Performance. And I'm already... Uh, Sorry, performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing performance for the second time right now, and I'm more. I'm in phase one right now. And I'm more even nervous about phase four coming up. But <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's good. You're in the right. Listen, I like Maps Anabolic, Maps 15, Maps Symmetry, Maps Performance. Those are the programs that you should probably cycle through. Have you tried Symmetry? No, I've never tried Symmetry. It's looked interesting, but I haven't. I've done it. Oh, I'd love yeah, that for you, you. You need to do that. I would love that for you. I'm send that over. Can to I you. send that to you? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Should I should I stop performance and do symmetry or, or finish performance and do symmetry? You can finish. You performance. can run it through. Yeah, yeah, and then just switch over right after. It's a great bridge program too. Like after any of our major ones, like performance, uh, anabolic or aesthetic. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. That'd be great. I, I definitely think uh, in, incorporating a, a a walk and get steps up would be would do 100%. a lot for you. And even on uh, like, you know, you're also another client that it, a great thing to do is like uh, I, I would prescribe on your days off, encourage like a, a nice long hike, you know, just walking, but uh, make that like a start to become a ritual yeah. on your Saturday or Sunday that, 
you know, when you start your day, you get up first thing in the morning and totally. just go for a nice walk, leisure walk, not crazy, not aggressive. Don't get on. I'm not asking you to run like, but just go for a nice long hour walk. Um, uh, this is uh, something that uh, I think could make a big difference. If you, if you have a pretty sedentary job, it makes a big difference. Yeah, it's really helpful. I mean, honestly, now that you're saying it that way, I think that would be helpful with stress too. Whenever, so yes. before I started listening to you guys and started lifting, I was doing, I did a lot of running for years. I ran a marathon two and a half years ago. Uh, it was, it was like a, what was life goal things. And one of the best parts about it is that I would be out on the run <clears throat> and it would become almost meditative. Like I'd listen to podcasts while I was running and then totally. half the time I just turn off the podcast and just pray. And it was incredible. But, and I lost that whenever, you know, you, you get home from the run, all of a sudden you're with the kids and that stuff is not possible anymore. And it, it feels like two birds with one stone kind of thing. Oh, uh, I mean, bro, Absolutely. you just sold you just sold me on why I would definitely make you do that for sure. I, yeah, that just just because you already see the value in that, and so it is. You're you're killing two birds with one stone. You're going to get tremendous value for from that from being able to meditate, relax, pray, and bring down the stress in, in your life. In addition to that, you're doing something healthy and good for you and moving. Yeah, I would yeah, totally encourage totally encourage you to do that. Yeah, that's really helpful. Okay. Awesome. We're going to, we'll send over, do it. We'll send over symmetry to you. Uh, and then, uh, keep us posted. I'd like to hear how you're doing another 30, 60 days. I think, uh, with the TRT, the track you're going right now. And then if we incorporate some increasing the steps and the walks on, on the weekends, I think that you'll already start to see a nice, nice process of leaning out. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, it, 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 the funny thing is you listen to you guys, you say this all the time, you listen to you guys enough and you can almost you can almost guess what you guys are going to say. So it's like, y'all are, y'all are not surprising me too much. I mean, Justin, uh, you know, uh, Adam hasn't made a car reference yet. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Sal hasn't talked about his grandkids yet, but, well, you know. but other than that, <laughs> good deal. Yeah. Right on Ross. Talk a little you. longer. Yeah. It'll come out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Appreciate y'all. Right, right, good luck. All right. So, okay. When I, when I have somebody like this, um, and again, he already said enough to me, like, this is for sure what I'm doing with him. He's doing good hitting whole foods. He's hitting his protein intake, but we also don't want to get into like the tracking and, and what that does, right? Okay, cool. So that's that's step one. Next, very easily, I can make a massive impact on this guy by incorporating, increasing our steps on a daily basis. And then on the weekends, we go for these long yep. one hour walks. And, it, and then once he told me, what he has, what he got in the past from running and being outside like that. That's like, the biggest impact. That right yeah. there. I mean, that's enough for me to be like, oh, you should do that no matter what. Yes. But then when I also know that you already have a really sedentary job like that, you just, we need that activity. We need to include that activity on a regular basis. And it's not a major commitment to say, hey, you know what? Every morning when I first get up, I'm not even going to change my clothes. I'm going to roll out and just go for a a walk for an hour. And, and to be very clear, it's not even about the calorie burn that those walks will produce. It's about the improvement in his overall health, yes. which then has a considerable impact on his ability to lose weight, feel better, strength train, all that stuff. And I, listen, and if and if he pays attention to this, he'll he'll make these connections. And I, I think making these connections are paramount to being consistent and sticking with this. By getting up and doing that, say on Saturdays, let's say, one of the things you'll also notice, aside from the, the decompressing and the stress relief, the activity that uh, you're going to get for the extra steps in calorie burn, and then also watch the productivity and attitude you have the rest of that day. I, I swear it'll make a difference on that. And if you can connect that to like, oh, wow, man, every time I do those walks, I am more, then I'm more active throughout the entire day and I'm in a better mood. That makes a big difference. Hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. It's 50% off. Then we have a bundle that's different. It's called the Starter Bundle that includes our most popular programs. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Dallas from Florida. What's up, Dallas? What's going on, Dallas? How can we help you? Hey, guys. What's going on, man? It's an absolute pleasure to be on. Um, I really look up to you guys. Um, I've been a trainer for about eight years now, and um, I feel like um, after listening to you guys for the past maybe three or four years, I've learned so much. So shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate, it. Appreciate that, man. What you got for us? So, um... Yeah, so um, I actually got into personal training because I was in a, a weight loss journey myself. I lost over 100 pounds probably like 10 years ago. So my family and friends are trying to figure out, you know, how to do it. So I ended up becoming a personal trainer. I was like actually um, successful to keep it off for a little bit. Um, 
And then just recently, maybe about uh, 15 months ago, uh, the weight did start to creep back up. So um, just for context, I'm 6'5", 250 pounds. Um, but I feel like my sweet spot is probably like around 230. Um, of course, I, I have done calorie deficits before and tracking my macros and things like that. But um, I noticed it becomes really, really um, annoying for me to like weigh every single thing, making sure I'm on point with that. So I kind of wanted something um, a little bit easier in a sense uh, for me to kind of, for me not to think about it. So I guess for my question is, um, is um, what do you guys think of alternate day fasting? Um, I know Sal, you're big on um, the spiritual aspect of, of fasting and not more, not more so on like that, the health side, but I just kind of want to get your thoughts on that. So to be clear, alternate day fasting is, is that where you only eat within a certain time frame every other day, or is that a complete fast every other day? It's a complete fast every other day. So, um, um, similar to the one meal a day or the OMAD, um, for instance, if I was going to fast today, I wouldn't eat at all for, um, for, for Wednesday or, or for, for the day that I'd, I'd be in. And then the next day I would, I would consume, um, and then I would pretty much do an al alternate day that way. So it's a very black and white way of creating a calorie deficit. The, the problem is you're setting yourself up for a binge restrict, uh, behavior if you're not already noticing that. So, you know, I cannot eat all day for one day. And then it sets me up for the following day where I can eat a lot or I want to eat a lot. And then don't worry, I won't eat again the following day. So behavior wise, it does tend to encourage, especially in every other day type uh, approach, uh, a behavior or relationship with food that is not really sustainable. Um, ph physiologically speaking, um, fasting that often can have some stress effects on the body. But I guess that's really... That's really going to be based on your overall stress, overall training, and all that stuff. But I, I don't like the kind of behaviors that it tends to encourage, especially, especially with someone who lost 100 pounds. You, you know, to be 100 pounds overweight, there were some big changes that you had to make, and you've maintained them, or you, you've started to maintain them for 10 years. But there's some stuff there that's still challenging, like you said, like you don't want to weigh and count and measure. So you have yet to find that piece with nutrition where you go about and it's a relaxed feeling around food. And I, so I get the allure of, of alternate day fasting. It's like, okay, I, it's two rules, don't eat or eat. And that's all I got to worry about. But what we want to do is get you a place, Dallas, where, where the rules are, um, they don't necessarily feel like rules. They just feel like this is just kind of how I care for myself. I know it's easier said than done, but um, I, you know, the approach you're going on, I can't help but think it's going to contribute to this there's on off mentality. There's also another challenge that it presents too. You're not a tiny little petite guy. Uh, and to get the adequate protein that you need to sustain the muscle mass, that also would be because that's the challenge that comes to mind for me right away. Like if I were to do something like this, we'd be like, man, how do I still average out enough protein in the week to sustain my muscle mass too? So that's the other challenge with this is not just the psychological one and the binge restrict uh, relationship that it can, can cause or promote, but also just to be able to consistently hit your, your, your protein intake. And I'm sure you're a trainer and stuff like that, uh, that muscle is important to you. That would be the other thing. Definitely. Yeah. That'd be the other thing that I would probably be concerned. Now, considering you're a trainer, um, the, this also adds a, a kind of a different twist. I'm always pro coaches and trainers trying a lot of this stuff. You know, who better than to test it uh, so you can speak to it yeah. uh, and communicate. The, I mean, it's part of why I did the trisepatide journey. It's not because I needed to do trisepatide and lose a bunch of weight. It's like, man, I wanted to experience what it's like to go through that so I can then communicate the, even better to clients. So I'm totally a fan of, you know, you testing diets and trying things like that as a coach and a trainer because I think it just is going to make you better at what you do. Um, but as far as it being a long-term solution for you, I think Sal's on the right path of, you know, I think I'd eventually want to get you to a place where there just isn't a lot of stress around the food and you don't feel like you have to be following this specific diet in order to maintain the physique that you want. So that would, that would be my kind of two cents yeah. on, on the idea. On, I, you know, here's a couple things that might help you with this. If you don't want to get off this, um, this, this, this structure, 
on the days you don't eat, what are you replacing eating with? On the days that I don't eat. So for instance, I would have a black coffee and I, I will actually have um, some water for sure. A, a whole bunch of water. I'll make sure I'm extremely hydrated. And uh, what I'll actually do is um, I'll uh, sprinkle some pink Himalayan salt in my water too. Um, if I'm going to do anything, typically on the days that I fast, I make sure I don't really do any type of um, any, any crazy workouts or anything like that. Um, if anything, I'm, I may be going for a, a, a 20 minute walk if that. So what I meant was what you want to do is on those fasting days, if you want to really take advantage of the potential is I would really, I would, I would try to find, um, actions or behaviors or practices that are going to help you with your relationship to food. So meditation, prayer, journaling, um, reflection is what I would do rather than, um, just not eating. Um, and that could help a little bit. Then the days you do eat, are they planned meals? Are they meals that you prepped yourself? Or is it more like a cool, I can eat now and then whatever I feel like type of deal. So what, so just, just two things I would do with something like this is I'd say, okay, the days I don't eat, let me take advantage of this fast, not the calorie restricted part, but the behavior aspect of it. Can I reflect? Can I journal? Can I, can this be a, can my fast days be personal growth days? Mm -hmm. Can I view these as days of personal growth? And then my eating days, can this, can those be more structured in terms of my meal prep? And then here's the food that I eat. And I still avoid heavily processed foods because what you don't want to do, like I said, is just not eat, eat mm -hmm. because it'll turn into restrict binge, restrict binge. If you're not already experiencing that Dallas, how, um, we, we didn't even ask you, uh, how, how did you put the 20 back on? Do you have, do, I mean, what would you attribute the, the 20 pounds that you put back on to? That's actually a good question. I'm still trying to figure that out. So, mm -hmm. um, around this time last year, um, I, I got my hormones checked. Um, my testosterone was, was on the floor. It was at like 163. Oh, wow. um, I was actually take I was actually taking Clomid, and that helped me actually um, raise it up. So what ended up happening was I got off. Uh, I my 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 own like it wasn't even doctor's thing. I got off Clomid, and then my testosterone plummeted again. So then I start taking Clomid again. I start um, getting the benefits of that. But then what I realized is that second time around me taking Clomid, I noticed a jump in my weight. And I know typically sometimes you may have a little bit more of water retention, maybe like 10 or 15 pounds, but um, it was about like 20 pounds because I, I weigh myself every week and I noticed a jump literally in two months. Okay. So you could have some estrogenic effects from Clomid yeah. too. Are you still taking it? Yeah. Okay. Are you, uh, do you have the ability to work with a hormone specialist? Because doing this on your own, you're going to be, there's a lot of shots in the dark you'll be taking. Um, I, I, um, I, I probably should tap in with, uh, uh, Dr. Cabral probably. Huh? No, I, no, well, I mean, he's a functional medicine yeah. practitioner, so he could help, but if you're doing oh, hormones, okay. go to mphormones.com, talk to our people there. Um, how old are you? Okay. I'm 38. Okay, so you, you're, yeah. you, I mean, testosterone mm -hmm. replacement therapy would probably be a better option, uh, but I would talk to the doctors there. And by the way, Dallas, this could be a, a massive game changer for you. Huge. If you are, if your testosterone's on the floor, you have uh, abnormally high estrogen levels, and you balance your hormone levels out, yeah. and you consistently train like the trainer that you are. When you have these days where maybe you have a little additional calories because you don't really track, it's going to get partitioned to building muscle. And one of the hardest things is when you're when your hormone levels are off like that, it doesn't feel like that. In fact, it feels like any extra calories go right to storing his body fat, even if you are working out and doing these things you're supposed to. So I can't stress enough about that. This may solve a lot of this challenge. The mystery, at least. yeah, this mystery of like the the weight and the calories and the food thing. It's like you may be able to if your hormones are balanced and right. You may be able to eat very normally yeah. and not really, and really worry about any sort of negative weight gain. And, and, and actual testosterone replacement is very inexpensive. Uh, but if that's the issue, it would it would it's like a game changer. I mean, yeah. you go from low to high normal. That's a big game changer uh, for someone like you. And, and with Clomid and estrogen being high and gaining weight, it could be water. It could definitely be body fat. And you'll notice body fat storage will look a little different, more in the chest, more in the arms. Um, so if you're noticing those things, I would definitely go to mphormones.com. That's our people. Those are doctors. You're not working with, 
you know, some gray market weird stuff and have them and send them your labs. If you have labs, send it to them and see what they recommend. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. It'll be worth it. Definitely. Dallas. It'll be well worth it. Dallas. Totally. Yep. Yep. Thank you so much. And, and again, with, with the whole alternate day fasting, um, it was, um, it was very similar to, to what you said, Justin, um, not Justin. Um, yeah. It's, it's like my, my whole thing is I'm not married to this idea. It was more so of me kind of just uh, trying it out just to see yeah. Um, yeah. Um, how I feel about it and, yeah, yeah. and just to kind of get some feedback from my, from my body. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's I'm, good. I'm all for that. that like sense. coaches and trainers, I'm all for trying yeah. all kinds of weird diets, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I think you're going <laughs> to get clients, you're going to get clients that ask it. You're going to get clients that do things similar to it and you going through it can speak to the the pros and cons of it after you've yep. experienced it. So I'm all for that. But I, I, go get the hormone. Yeah, things. by the when way, hang up. I want you to go to mphormones.com because I want you to solve be that. Game and, and, and just so you know, fasting can have an adverse effect on testosterone, yes, especially yes. if it's already yeah. low. Especially full days of fasting. It's yeah. not like you're just missing a few meals. Yeah, you're like, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, the combination of losing 100 pounds, the fasting like this, you're 38, you're not, you're not spring chicken anymore. All these things are working against you <laughs> testosterone wise. You go solve that and it may make this whole pressure stress around the food completely go away for you. Right. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to tap in with them and, um, and take it from there. I, I appreciate you guys uh, taking this call. You All got right. it, man. All right, Dallas, in, good luck, brother. Yeah. Once he mentioned the testosterone. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's people are just taking Clomid on their own. Uh, this is a you know these are uh, estrogen receptor blocking uh, drugs, but that doesn't mean when you block the receptor that you get no estrogenic effects. There's some estrogenic effects. Uh, now the reason why a man might take it with low testosterone is the body gets a signal because the receptors are blocked. We're not having enough estrogen. The way that it produces estrogen by making more testosterone, converting it to estrogen, so it can raise testosterone it's true but if you look at the side effects of clomid weight gain mood swings and estrogenic side effects uh are, are listed underneath Could them be where you, that 20 pounds came from yeah. you know it's crazy um because i've experienced in my life being a young 20 year old taking testosterone when i didn't need it when i did that uh and, and looking back right this is me telling sharing my whole kind of journey uh it didn't it didn't really feel as magical as I thought it was going to be in my twenties. Yeah. Like everyone said it was like, you know, I thought like, man, I'd take it and I'd look like the cover of the magazine. Absolutely. It's, it's the opposite of what happened for me. It was really unfortunate. Uh, but then I've also been later on in my life where my testosterone was in its floor. Right. And I did, I was doing everything to try to bring it up naturally. And then finally kind of throwing my hands up going, like, okay, I'm going to get back on TRT. And that was like life changing. Yeah, like to it, go from low to yeah. To when you need, when you when need deficient, it, yeah, yeah. When you're deficient, like it, yeah. And, and Grant, I'm not saying that testosterone doesn't help no matter what. I'm not saying that, but it's like huge difference when mm -hmm. you are when you're deficient in that and you get that help. It's like like because I remember going through that and it would feel like this. It felt like. I even if if I was just slightly off from being perfect in the diet, like it just felt like it went right to body fat. Yeah. It felt like as much as everything my, was a grind. Too, everything was a grind when, when I've trained. I'm training out. hard and consistent, yeah. and it felt like I couldn't build any muscle. Like it is a very frustrating place to be in when you're there, and just solving that. Whoa! It makes a, a huge difference around calorie balance and exercises and all that stuff. So I hope he does it. Our next caller is Beth from Maryland. Hi, Beth. Hello. How can we help you? Hi, guys. How you doing? Oh, on? thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, uh, great. Right. Um, all right, I'll just jump into the question, get things going. All right. Um, uh, this was written in April. So things are a little, little bit different. I'll just read it as I wrote it, um, and we'll go from there. Um, 41 years old. I've uh, been an athlete my whole life and have been lifting for the last four years. Um, five, seven, I uh, was 156, and when uh, and I spent the previous fall and winter eating at a maintenance, which was roughly about 2,300 calories. When I sent in the question, I was lifting three days a week. I have a sedentary job, but managed to stay pretty active, riding horses four days a week and chasing around two young boys. I do average about 10,000 steps a day. After 12 weeks into my cut, I was worried that I went too aggressively and that I hit a plateau before I reached my goal. I started the cut at 1,800 calories and gradually dropped down to 1,650. And at, since the start of that cut, I had only lost about six pounds and had not lost any in, in several weeks. 
I know the scale is not always a reliable metric, but I don't know what else to go by. My energy was good. My sleep was good. Um, and since I didn't have a significant amount of fat to lose, I didn't know if the fit of my clothes would change that much. I was hoping to lose about 10 to 12 pounds. And um, since I doubt I put any muscle in on in that deficit, I really thought the weight would go down. So I just want to know what I'm doing wrong. Good, good question. Okay, so let's... What, what, what is there things yeah, the since then? Has, yeah, is there uh, what has changed, changed so we know what's going on with that too? Okay, so um, after being frustrated, presenting in that question, I basically went back up to a maintenance. I did a reverse diet and now I'm eating at like 25, 2600 oh, calories a good. day. I'm doing anabolic, um, so I'm going through that program now and I do feel stronger. I have put on about eight or nine pounds. Um, and I hadn't been looking at the scale just so that I wouldn't let that affect my habits. <laughs> um, but um, the thing that I, I, so in my 20s, I had spent a lot of time under eating and using the um, stimulant diet pills. And I didn't have a period for like, I don't know, like six years. It wasn't great. And it feels like every time I try and go into a cut now, since I've come out of that, it's like more than just a couple of weeks into that deficit. And I, my body will downregulate like so fast. And I don't know if that's just me making an excuse or if that's something that would actually happen. No, it does. It, it happens. does happen. It does happen. <laughs> yeah. Are you okay? So do you know what your body fat percentage is at? Cause that'll help me answer this. I have. I don't know. I'd be guessing, and I don't know if I'm an accurate guess. Okay, I suggest. I do doing, have a fair amount of muscle. Uh, yeah, and okay. And also, what kind of athlete were you? What sports did you play? Oh, all sorts: lacrosse, basketball, soccer. Awesome. Uh, you know, all of all of them. <laughs> Tell me about your lifts. Your your what is your squat, deadlift, overhead press, bench press? Give me some ideas of your strength. Um, back squat. When I was doing like three to four reps. Cause now in anabolic, I'm, I just finished the pre phase. So I was doing like a lighter weight, mm -hmm. but before that I was, I could squat 180. I could leg press. I can leg press a, a shit ton more than my squat. I could put like seven plates on the leg press wow. and, um, I could deadlift 245. Oh, Oh, you're strong. You're really strong. Yeah. You're strong. Beth. Uh, I, th so I don't know what your body fat percentage is. You're probably in a good, healthy range. Because of your background of under eating and overtraining, which is what you probably did as an athlete, you lost your period. That's a really good barometer on that for women. Uh, you know, you, your your body's probably pretty resistant to to a calorie deficit. Yeah. So, okay, the question is, what do I do then? Well, there's two things. Number one, uh, I don't think you should chase any body fat percentage lower than like 18 or 17. But that's lean. That's pretty lean. If someone if you got down to that, you'd probably be, be pretty satisfied. I think you should probably live in the 20 to 23% range. I think that's a good lean body fat. Um, and if you're higher than that, the way you get down to that is slow at maintenance. Yeah. And what you do is you, you, you create the deficit through continuing to get stronger. Your focus should just be performance, getting stronger. Don't go into a crazy bulk, but don't go into a crazy cut. I would do kind of like uh, undulating calorie days, some days lower, some days a little higher, averaging out to right around maintenance. And then let your body kind of grow into, let your metabolism grow into the deficit that'll produce the leanness. With someone like you, and I've worked with people like you with a long athletic background, especially female athletes, they just overtrain like crazy, under eat. Uh, and, and what ends up happening, we go into deficit, it's as if the body is has a memory. And, and I believe this to be true. I believe the central nervous system has a memory. And you've taught your body to be able to become extremely efficient very quickly. And so you go into deficit, you'll see some results, and then it's like nothing. Um, and so I think you, you should probably live around maintenance with some shortcuts and short bulks within that and really just focus on your performance in the gym. And, and I would get a body fat test and see where you're at, see what range you're in. And if you're already in that low 20 percentage, I mean, you could try getting a little lower if you want, but that's probably where you want to stay. You're, uh, Beth, you're doing great. Uh, you, uh, your numbers, everything, and actually your story is very similar to Katrina. Uh, and like when I first started to help her, I don't know if you've heard me share the story, but we were together for a good five, six years before I even took hold of her training program, right? Because she, I didn't want to step in and do that until she wanted me to do that. And this is very, and her only way of like getting down five or 10 pounds, would she add all this crazy running and cut 
hard calories just to see five pounds at best. That was kind of like where she was at. And that literally what you did is the direction I sent her in is like, okay, I'm not, we're not doing any more of these runs. You're, I'm going to increase your calories and let's go get strong as fuck. That's our goal. We're going to go get strong. We're going to get your back squat up. We're going to get your deadlift up and just slowly increase calories over time. And where we ended up is a very similar calorie where you're at now to where she was eating 3000 calories, not doing cardio. And now her body was just starting to lean out. And so you, I don't think your answer is going to be in deficits. Although I would allow this just for the, the, the mental part for her. So we were going on this journey and she would get a little discouraged because she feels like she's not progressing with that. And I keep increasing calories. So she's not seeing this. I'd, I'd let her do like a week or two week drop in calories just so she could see that kind of movement. And then I go right back to the calorie maintenance to surplus. And so you could, uh, I wouldn't be against you interrupting that sometimes like with a, a, like a one to two week cut mini cut, but then most of the time you need to be living in a maintenance to surplus and getting strong. And that is going to build and give you the body that you're kind of chasing calorie cutting for someone like you or like her, uh, you, there's absolutely something to be said about some people's bodies are so resilient to that, that they only get a little bit of a benefit. Then the body plateaus right away and says, uh, uh, we don't like this. We're stopping right there. And so if you have already figured that out about yourself, this is the direction. The direction you were already going is the direction I'd have you. You can still do these little one to two week cuts, uh, but then go back up. That's kind of how I would do it with you. And then prog programming right now, you're on anabolic, right? I'm doing anabolic and I bought symmetry. I was going to do that one next unless you have another suggestion. I love symmetry. Now. I love symmetry great. and I like powerlift for you too. Yeah, powerlift are strong. Those are great programs for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. let, let, us send, let us send you powerlift. I think that would be a great one for oh, you. Oh, yeah. I mean, and your lifts are great. Yeah. You've got great strength. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lean, lean into that. Lean in. Get strong. Mm -hmm. Just try and get strong. Yeah, and, and really, you're, you're going to grow your metabolism into creating the deficit for you. That's what ends up happening. That's what, exactly what happened with Katrina. And, and so let me give you one more piece of advice too on the, the get strong thing, right? And this is something I had to do with her. So as you're going through our programs you know that like it's phased out and in certain phases like you know the squats say five reps or they say 10 reps or they say 15 reps right that it'll give you that when i'm pushing strength with her one of the things i i remind her is that i care less about you getting to the reps as much as i want you to add weight to the bar so like let's say you kind of have an idea of like oh i can back squat this much and so you five, at least five reps so i put that weight on instead i would go like do you think you could add 10 more pounds? And you go, I don't know if I can get five reps. That's okay. If we stop at three or four, I'm okay with that. So I would rather you okay. not hit the reps because you tried to put more weight on the bar than be so concerned with, oh, I want to make sure I at least get five that you always kind of put the lighter amount of weight on. And so it's totally okay that it's we we're supposed to be doing sets of five, but you could only get sets of three. That's awesome. Same thing goes for when it says 10. When it says 10, if you fell short and only get seven, I don't care. I'd rather see that because I'm pushing you to to lift more and build muscle and get strong more so than following the the rep count on the on the page. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, totally. Okay, that should. Thank you so much. Yeah, that should really help. So we're gonna send powerlift your way too. No, oh, awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, you got Beth. It, Beth. All right, Beth. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, ex athletes can be very challenging sometimes. She seems very open. I think she's going to go in the right direction. I, this yeah. is this was But ex athletes it's it's a complete it's a such a big switch. Um and when you train for that long, that hard uh especially when you add lots of calorie deficits, getting the body to relearn or change afterwards can be difficult. And then especially psychologically the person, yeah, although it didn't sound like hardwired in there. It, it is and it didn't sound like this was her issue, but oftentimes they're perception of what intensity sh you know appropriate intensity <laughs> it's completely appro off yeah. so skewed yeah. so for, skewed for the average person that's trying to like, understand like, th this is an example of like she's said it she's played all sports she's been playing her whole life this is your body is will get adapted to low calorie and high intensity especially when you've been doing it for years or decades yeah, yeah. Like it sounds like That's she was in your environment. So then all of a sudden you decide, oh, I'm going to go on this weight loss journey and so like that. And then what do you do? You cut calories. Like your, your body's, body's like, like, I know what to do. Yeah, I've seen this before. Yeah. Right. And it's our it's preparing for even more intensity than you, you probably even plan to. So there are absolutely people. <laughs> you got to run a totally different system. Yes. And that and that's just it. Like this is, that was why Katrina's strategy and her like her numbers, like her, her height, her Similar. weight.
weight, similar. her calories where she was at, all very similar to what Katrina was. And we eventually got to a place where we could eat 3,000 calories, the leanest she's ever been. Yeah, yeah. It takes, yeah. takes a little bit of time. You got to be patient. I remember having to interrupt the bulk and you had conversations i'm sure with her yes yeah. consistently reminding her that we're doing good we're heading the right track hey if you want to show if you want me to show you to lean out a couple pounds real quick go ahead drop let's drop calories for two weeks and then i'll show you we'll drop a few pounds and you can see what it looks like when you get sucked out and you lean down it's like okay then let's go back because we can't stay there long because your body will get adapted to it real quick and you'll get frustrated all right i know you like that episode if you did check this one out 30 percent body fat for men this is way too high this is actually a bit high for women as well so in today's episode we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10 what is 10 percent body fat this is when you have a visible six pack can you go from 30 to 10 percent yes it's possible but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher. Body